Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Section. What are y'all saying, you beautiful motherfuckers? What's popping? It's your boy, Abbas Wab, saying what is going on. First things first, as always, smash that subscribe right there so you know when these episodes drop. And if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever it is, do the same. Join up on the Immigrant Section or, you know, it's not a good look for you. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you'll come off as a bigot. No! Anyways, <laughs> with me in the studio today, my man, Keith Pager. What hey, the fuck is popping, bro? Fuck, bro. You know, uh, big time fan of this podcast. So glad you asked me to do it, man. Oh, bro, I've been, I asked you like before COVID and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yo, for sure, for sure. It's like just respect and love. And then like you were gone. Oh, uh, yeah. Was, you know what I mean? I'm always, I'm, here, here's the thing with me though. Cause I'm like a OG in the game. I'm, I hear that a lot when people are like, come do, come do, come do. I'm like, let's see if he follows up. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you know what right? I mean? So I'm all about like, I'll say yes to anything, but it's up to motherfuckers to follow up. So <laughs> yeah. oh, that, it's so true. Cause like yeah. I ask some people and they assume that the thing you're doing is like, just going to fall apart in like a month. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. You know, and then like yeah. after episode 60, people are like, oh shit, this is the thing. And then they started doing it. But episode right. like up to 50, nobody was like, nobody wanted to. No, I hear that. And I feel like uh, that's what it is with a podcast. You got to get this. It's a snowball effect. You got to get the ball rolling. Nobody wants to be like your early guest. You know what I mean? They want to yeah. jump in when it's an established thing. They're like, this thing is not going to even make it to the air. So why would I go on? No, I feel that. And I feel like um, with, um, with that being said... Um, <laughs> A lot of, a lot of people like myself. I would love to be on the first two, three episodes. I would have been like, "Yeah, dog, yo, I was there first. You know, you know when you go to like, or or when you hear a track before anybody else does. Oh, you and brag like, about and you're like, that. yo, yo, I've been bumping down for a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Yo, you know the immigrant section, dog. Yeah, yeah. I did episode three. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean, bro? <laughs> I did episode three. Do bro, I know that track am- was on the mixtape. What do you mean? Yeah, what are you talking about, bro? It's been out, man. That's so true, bro. I actually asked um, a while back. I asked Tricks when I barely knew him. I met him at yeah. a show. I'm like, "Yo, come to the podcast." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, I might." I'm like, "Yeah, oh, like, this, this nigga's never gonna." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, big, yeah. yeah he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He's like, "I'm like, he's never coming," <laughs> and he just disappeared. And like, he left the city or whatever. But you know, you yeah. can tell sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to be mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got you, Adam. Yeah. Wait, what? No, like, it's it's okay. a bus, okay. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what's going on, man? Before the pandemic, mm-hmm. I would just run into you at the Nubian. You were yeah. like, you're like a way more veteran guy. So like, I would just see you at the most established shit because I'm okay. running around in the mic scene and shit like that. Yeah. And I'd see you once in a while here and there, uh, but I would hear the name, yo, Keith Pedro. And that's a, that's a name, like when you're coming up in the game, yeah. it's not just, there's like, l- people are like mythical, you know? Yeah. And a name like Keith Pedro, it just sounds funny, you know? <laughs> Especially when you haven't yeah. met the motherfucker, yeah. it's just like, yo, man, Keith Pedro came Who is through, this bro? guy? Yo, two, Keith Pedro. Two first name motherfuckers. Yeah. Who is this guy? Who the fuck is Keith Pedro? <laughs> you know what, tell you the truth, uh, is the op- that was um, the thing with you. Because, me, I, like I said, we produce shows with Norm. So me and Norm were producing that Cadillac Lounge. And before that, prior to that, like months before, I kept hearing your name. Right, and you are just got a boss, a boss. He's fucking funny. He's fucking smart. He's not, you know, he's fucking funny, man. And then we were planning the show, and then that's all I kept hearing was people like, "Yo, you got like when we were doing our bear joke shows." Yeah, we always, you know, our bear joke formula is like two killers, one like middle class dude, and an up and comer. You know what I mean? So like everybody's like, "Okay, who who should we get?" And then I heard a lot of people were dropping their names. It's like, who is this guy? And then uh, tell you the truth, that Cadillac Lounge show was my actual first time watching your set. Like I've seen you around, but that was my first time watching your set. So I was just like, yeah, yeah, this guy's funny. Because then when we booked that show, Norm was like, I want you to see this guy, a buzz. Oh, I really fuck want yeah, you to man. see this guy. Because, uh, you know, we do a lot of crazy shows, me and fucking Norm. So we try to. Yo, respect, the respect. Huh. And it's, that kind of stuff never comes back to you. Yeah. You hear these murmurs, nobody's like, you know, people are careful to not say some shit that'll go to your yeah. head. <laughs> Yeah, when you're around you, yeah, some higher ups are not gonna be like, "Yo, we heard you're killing it." You just, you just you would just watch, yeah, <laughs> and keep that to yourself and just be every. The comedy is a weird thing. Like people yeah. gotta they gotta stay distant a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't want to corrupt his mind and think and make him think he's too good. So yeah. I just like dab him up a little bit. You know what I mean? But like yeah. all that like hype, I don't see any of that. Bro. I feel that's a it's a a Toronto Canadian thing. I feel like you know. Uh, like you ever perform in the states? You ever? I, yeah, I started in the states, like, but open yeah, mics, yeah. so I nothing real. You know what I mean? Um, it's weird because like, 
I'll perform in the States. And motherfuckers just... Like, I remember I did one show at the at the Hollywood, uh, at the Comedy Store, sorry. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, uh, I, know, I was at the store. This is years back? Uh, it was probably like 2017, maybe. Okay, okay. Yeah, like a few years before, like two years before the pandemic. So I was like, I was like, I was, I was torn a lot back in LA and stuff because I got management there. And then uh, they were like, some guy came up to me. He's like, yo, you're amazing, bro. I manufacture watches. I would love to make you a watch. And I'm like, that is something you don't get. In Canada. In Canada. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Like, usually, and then, and then I, when I killed the show, the guy at the bar was like, yo, your tab's on me, dog. That was dope. And I'm like, sick. I'm a headliner at fucking Yuck Yucks. I will kill a whole weekend. They're still like, Keith, where's the tab? <laughs> where's that motherfucker? I just killed five shows, bitch. I've sold out the, sh- the weekend. What the fuck's the tab? Like, and the she- bartender has my credit card, too. <laughs> yeah, Let me like, just run the tab. Yeah, you have run- my card. Yeah, I'm picking up the paycheck here. You have my info. What do you mean? <laughs> On that note, what do you, th- you know, because I'm talking a lot of young guys right now, like yeah. who are kind of a little bit more senior than me. They're in like that mid tier. And a lot of them are doing their paperwork to go to the States. Yes. What do you think about that? Like the, like the idea, uh, especially as a guy like 10, 15 years, however long yeah. you've been doing comedy. Yeah. The idea is, yo, you can't make it in Canada. You got to go to the States. Um, what are your feelings on that? 10,000, thousand, thousand percent. There's no doubt. No doubt, man. Name, name a, a Canadian comic <laughs> that's famous that never blew up in the states. I guess the fucking I get Trailer Park Boys, but I'm assuming the states blew that sh- show up. But th- yeah, that's not a, no comedians on that show. Yeah, right? no comedians on that. But I mean, like to to me as a okay, Jerry D. Yo, you can stay in Canada because white white boys can stay in Canada because they can work every province. Yeah, dude. Uh, and and this is no shot to the industry, but this is a shot to the industry. Uh, <laughs> yo, listen up, CBC. Listen up, but here's the thing: you've been outed. I've been doing like during this whole pandemic, I've been pitching shows. I've been and and it's like Okay, I don't fucking say it. Fuck it. I've been pitching shows and it's all these fucking people like we need a we need a diverse show. We need ethnic we need an ethnic show, Keith. You have you have diversity? You have a show about diversity? We need more diversity. We need more diversity. We need an ethnic show. So I did all these pitches with all these companies and production companies on these networks in Canada. And there's like three, four people sitting in these these meetings and they're looking for a diverse show. But they're all white people. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's like I did I did a meeting with like, uh, like I, I probably did a meet like probably 16 people in the Canadian industry over the past four months. And all of them were white. And they're all asking for, for ethnic diversity. shows and diversity. And I'm like, would you take diet info, diet tips from a fat dude? No. So why am I pitching this here? Like you, you're clearly going home and smashing your fucking shepherd's pie. Like, yeah. what do you, what do you mean, dude? Like, I, you want an ethnic show? Well, like, it's the most agenda possible. It's like we'd love. This is the only thing CBC can get behind. We can't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we need struggling women of color. Yeah, that's what the show has and to the be. Cra- yeah, and the crazy thing is, like, there's only one. Yeah. Like, remember, Kim's Convenience and Little Moss and the Prairie were not on the air at the same time. It's You're like, right. Little Moss and the Prairie <laughs> died. And like, okay, well, we need another one. There's a vacuum. But now there's Kim Convenience. And and if that show flops, we'll just turn Kim Convenience into a cartoon like Corner Gas. You know? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you know that's, I mean? the, that's CBC's so, fucking, like, equation it's just It's just Canadian. It's just Because the problem is, here's the problem, man. We have, like, what, three metropolitan cities? Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal. Montreal, right? Yeah. So how do you survive how do you make money off manitoba saskatchewan halifax new brunswick so that shows that's what these companies are talking and i'm not hating on them but i did um so back in 2019 well real quick isn't it funny how they ask you about the ethnic when you're like i'm filipino like yeah like i'm like with with the the shows you were pitching i'm assuming you were you starred in them yeah yeah so it's like what do you mean ethnic yeah. No, but I'm the, the guy bringing reason. the show but to the But the crazy table. thing was these are contacts that I knew before. So I used to do a lot of stuff for Bell Media. I was like on video on trials doing all this much music shit. And these are contacts that I knew before. And I always told them I had shows. Okay. Right. Okay. And you and you did. And I did. And, and then did. I was giving them show ideas. And then but it was more like comedy. You know? It was like okay. here here's here's a like an alternative sketch show or here's like Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? Here's here's a cartoon, you know. They want like an immigrant arriving in Canada, yeah. and like, but now it's has like, a lesbian mom. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. my story is, I I a lot of people don't know is is um, I'm a father. Obviously, I have a 19 year old daughter, but my 19 year old daughter is half Jamaican. 
Okay. But she's my stepdaughter. Yes, yes, yes. So I have a full bred Filipino household, which is this Jamaican stepdaughter, which yeah. I love. Like she's my own. So these co- the, these production companies are like, let's talk about that. Your Jamaican daughter, your Filipino house, your Ooh, wife. Wow, yeah. let's check all the boxes. <laughs> God damn it, you know. So that, are they and, having jerk? Are they having fucking what, what are they, kind of rice? Dumplings? What's happening? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. So it's like that. But I, I get it though. But like a lot of these people though, like there was one time where. I, and, and, here, and here's the, the the cocky Canadian comic in me. Like I, I was like, yo, fuck. Yo, Let's go. Yo, yo, fuck these predi- – yo, no, 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 no. And I start Googling some of these, like, white people that I'm pitching to. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, these are very dope ethnic shows. Okay, so they actually do know what they're doing. Okay? Oh, legit. Yeah, so, like, one of the producers uh, 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 produced Hip Hop Evolution. Oh, the Netflix, one with Nas? The one with the Shad, the Shad on, on the Netflix? Host, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and I was like, okay, this is a dope show. That was a dope show. I didn't know it was this. I don't want to say the person's name. I don't know it was this person. You know what I mean? So it was just like that. So, and, and, and it's just like, you got to do the research. You know what I mean? That's the best thing about um, my my whole thing is too, is like uh, social media is so good to schmooze. Like you know DMs I mean? or like what? no, not even like like so before the meetings. Yeah, when I meet with these production companies and like these content directors or whatever. Yeah, I, I Google them. Yeah, you know, so I'll be like, oh, boss, oh, uh, I'll sit down in a meeting. I'll be like, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. By the way, love immigrant section. Oh uh, yeah, love it. You're like, Whoa, such a good. I didn't six, know you knew that. Sixty episodes. Well, we don't need to talk about this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is skip to the you know what I mean? <laughs> And that does the thing. <laughs> yeah. And like. We do this thing that yuck yuck the showcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So all the all the all the companies are like all the the bookers are in the booths. So literally at the end of the of the show, all these thirsty comics go say hello. <laughs> yeah, I've seen. And they don't they don't they don't like remember people's names and they just think going there. So I'm watching them all do it, and I have these like <laughs> bookers on Facebook. So I'm just like. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So then after they're all done, I'll come and I'll be like, hey, Jeff, man, saw you went sailing the other day. Whoa, that was nice. How's Brenda, man? <laughs> Holy fuck, you got a new dog? Like, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, doing yeah, research. Yeah. You're hitting them on uh, that personal yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm hitting them on their Facebook statuses and just seeing what they're doing. And like three, like three people, I'm like, oh my God. Oh, Frank, man, how's it been? Oh, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, wow, Keith. And, and, and then everybody like, and now you see all these thirsty comics like, fuck, they only, spoke to, done that they only spoke to me for two seconds. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Because you were there talking about yourself, bro. You know what I mean? Like, and they go to, you know, they're going to the back and be like, yo, I just talked to that person. Like, how'd you do it? It's like, I killed. I, I, killed. <laughs> I, th- I killed. I think they're going to book me. They're like 10 seconds and we did it back and forth, but I fucking smashed you. Yeah. He said, good job. I got he- two applause breaks. <laughs> yes, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I've it's- seen that shit the way the industry is. Like, I actually, I, I'm like, what's funny is when people are way before J, I'm at a point where it's like, JFL is like a cu- years away, and yeah. the people I'm around, it's funny the schemes that some of my boys are like, you know, Zoe or some mm-hmm. this person that books JFL, Zoe something. Yeah, yeah Zoe, right. They're like, yeah. bro, okay, She's amazing. So, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. You're like, congrats yeah. on your new dog, by the way, Zoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zoe, congrats on the new dog. Oh, yeah. yeah, but my, my boy's like, yo, we'll invite her to a show, we'll give her like free tickets everywhere. I'm like, Bro, chill. This is not how shit is going to pop off for us, is that we're going to run a little showcase and invite her and be like, free tickets, you know, get us on the festival. Like, Yeah, and then the problem is, like, what new people, I feel like the generation now don't know how to say no. Because when I, when I first started Yuck Yucks, I was on the Wednesday Amateur, right? But I was there for three years. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. move up when they asked me to move up. And I was like, nah. Because to me, in my head, was I knew that once I got signed, I was going to start showcasing. It was going to get serious. You thought you weren't ready? It's not. I was, I was ready, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to. Because to me, I treat comedy like it's, it's like rap music. So, so if I was this new up-and-coming artist, that, seven, that new seven showcase that these, these new bookers were going to see, that was my mixtape fam. That's my fucking, you know what I mean? That's, that's my college dropout they're yeah. about to see. So I wasn't ready to show them my that. fucking like like I was still doing Fifty Cent G Unit jokes. Okay. And I'm like, how is this gonna get on Halifax Comedy Fest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one's okay. gonna give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so I was Do you still like, remember G Unit jokes by the way? Oh, hundred percent. I had this one joke that that would kill, and then I would always go to the states. So I I remember I was in Buffalo, and this joke like killed it, and I was just like, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, Fifty Cent, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really scared of anybody that got shot nine times. Like, 
where, where I'm from, like gangsters are the ones who do the shooting <laughs> nine times. And like, and what the fuck is up with that stutter? Like, you know, like, bang, you would have got shot already. Like, no, no one's gonna, like, yo, you shoot, yo, you were in front, what's that you claim? Bam, too late, man. You're taking too fucking. There's no too long. Sp- there's no speech impediments in the hood. Yeah, there's no speech impediments in the hood, bro. You gotta say your clip. You gotta rep your fucking set. You can't be who you with. Just say it. Yeah. Just say it. There's no time to sc- scream out your crew in a drive-by. You can't. You're already down the block. You're already down the block. They spraying. Everyone's I think dead. it was Greg that shot us. Yeah. Just Greg. <laughs> Everyone's dead already. <laughs> yeah. That's so fucked. Did you notice that people in the states laugh harder? Yeah. No. Uh, Does that uh, make sense? I don't know if this is my experience, but I thought they have less reservations. Like Canadian audiences bring some shit to the into the show, and U.S. people that I, I noticed, think that's they, a Toronto thing, tell you too, because because. Um, you might be right, actually. The big city shit. The, uh, not even that. Like even like when you when I perform in like. Halifax, Nova Scotia. They yeah, fuck these, these old white people go crazy, bro. They're like, oh my god, Tim, that is you. That is you. Like, you ever do a show where like they're heckling, but it's not heckling? They're just agreeing? Yeah, they're, they're so like, amped. oh my god, yeah, that was me last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they sit there and they're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, oh, this guy's loving it. But I honestly think it's a Toronto thing, but Americans do. Yeah, Americans, like, I remember I did um, this all black show, Mo Better Mondays, on. Um, it sounds like a that's a, oh, it's a, that's it's a, a layup of a black show name. Mondays. Mo it's uh, Monday. Hollywood Improv on Monday, of course. Uh, I thought Sundays was uh, or is that uh, Laugh Factory? That's Sundays, Chocolate, Chocolate Sunday. Sunday. That's, Chocolate a, that's Sunday. a dope one too. But we did uh, Mo Better. I so I did that and fucking um, this is when. Do you remember when Jason Collins came out the closet, the basketball player? Yes, a long time ago. So this and is and he fresh. was the first. Yeah, this he was the first. Right? Yeah, and um, I had this joke about how like. Um, I would never fight a gay guy yeah, okay. because he has the emotions of a woman, but the strength of a man, like he's kicking. So like he'll, he'll kick my ass over something. I didn't like he'll whip my ass over a dream that he had. I mean, you know I mean like yeah. just unnecessary. <laughs> right. So I'd have these, like these jokes that was just like that. But then I had all like, there was so more tags to that and all this stuff. And like how getting fucked in the ass is the toughest thing you could ever do. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like just a bunch of random shit like that. And, um, there were already written jokes. But because I was in LA and I was this Toronto kid, I brought up Jason Collins. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know why people are hating it. So then it, it just seemed like it was a really fresh joke. They're like, oh my God, this guy's relevant. They loved it? No, oh, they loved They went crazy. They went nuts. They went crazy. And I was just, I felt really good. But in my head, I was like, nah, this was a back burner. This one I had, this one waiting. I just reworded the, the premise. You know what I mean? Yo, that's so. I love, don't you, that topical stuff that only works for like, you got it for like a week, couple weeks or a month, and it kills. Oh, buddy! Do you remember the van thing? Mm-hmm. The van guy who hit uh, yeah bro, for two three weeks. <laughs> I would open every show. I'd be like, the van guy. That's fucked up, right? You guys hear about him? How he may get off on all charges? And the whole crowd would be like, what? What? What do you mean? What? It's like, yeah. It's like, and then I'd be like, yeah. Didn't you hear? Apparently, he he got the fifteen dollar rental insurance. <laughs> you know what I mean? The coverage is insane. <laughs> <laughs> the coverage is insane. <laughs> and then people are dying. Dying. And then like a month and a half in, I'd be like, no, no, no. It'd be like two months. I'd be like, remember the van thing? Like the van thing? It's like, uh, and you got to stir yeah. it and then it's, yeah. it's losing its thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I was. I, I used to do all these like, uh, I don't know if you were living in the city by then, but do you remember the G20 summit? I know the summit, but I, don't, I wasn't in the city. Yeah, they had a G20 summit here and I was just like talking shit about that and it was, and and I had some really bangers and then when I had to re- rest them I'm like ah that's now the worst what? The moment <laughs> now what I kind of open up with you know? that last show where you yeah. know it's like it's dwindling oh, the relevancy is dwindling you're like I oh was, it's done it's yeah done. and the crazy thing was I was doing the same <laughs> thing for covid I remember like I was headlining a few shows Right before, literally right before the lockdown, and I would open up with shows like, ah, I'm like, what a great time to be Asian right now. I could get a whole row on a crowded bus just by coughing. <laughs> and they're like, ah, let's get away. Right? Oh, shit, and, this is fresh. And then people are like, that's so funny. And now, see, now you do that joke, like, too soon, bro. Too soon. Yeah, now they yell back, Asian lives matter. Yeah. You know? I lost my job because of the pandemic. <laughs> you know, people go nuts. But yeah, man. A crazy <laughs> time. But what, it, man, I just did a AMC to wedding yesterday. I had like 500 people that. indoors. I seen that. No masks. Nobody had a mask. No pretending. No I'm doing, one. I'm doing that on Saturday in London. 
I, I'm I'm from London, by the way. Which is, is it? Oh, nice. Do you do like Filipino stuff, or is it just like who, whoever hires you? No, this is a white wedding. Okay. I even called the groom, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm just letting you know that's gonna be all white people." That's my favorite wedding, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Oh man. That's my fa- because Pakistani weddings have no alcohol. Yeah. A wedding that has no alcohol is a different class. Of when a I wed- go to like like my my brown dudes or like my Middle but Sikhs, Eastern guys, Sikhs, Sikhs, they'll drink the fucking Sikh. I did a Sikh wedding, bro. I saw the most alcoholic man I've ever seen. Like guys who never sat and they were just in line at the bar. Sikhs <laughs> are lit. They're lit. They dance right when the wedding starts. But then you might get one of those angry Sikhs who's just. Bearing so much, like I, 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 yeah. my voice is like that. It's like you ain't drinking tonight, dog. You ain't drinking tonight. Oh, the guy when he drinks, everything surfaces. Oh, anger. Drink, and- not even that. He he, all of it. Like his his depression surfaces, but also his cockiness. Oh so shit, it's, that's it's a like dangerous mix. Dangerous mix. He's Tony Montana <laughs> with like fucking like self esteem issues. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what the fuck? So yeah, but like I know there's a lot of <laughs> weddings that I go to where there's no alcohol. Like the wedding is in the parking lot. Like the jam yeah, is in the like, oh shit, we're going to the car. Like every meal, two tables, just get up and go to a car. <laughs> and they come back laughing. Yeah, right? they're like, what's up with those guys? The ties, the, every time they come out, the ties are looser and looser. <laughs> yeah. They look like they were playing soccer. Like, what? You guys play soccer in the back? Why, why, what are you guys sweating? Yo, yeah. it's so, it, it's noticeable because I do a lot of Pakistani ones. And yeah. then. Besides, because uh, I've just done coincidentally, I've done a lot of Pakistani ones, and I have pictures. Yeah. I have like a Kijiji ad, yeah, and uh, I have Pakistani pictures. So Pakistanis come yeah. my way and go, "Oh, yeah. I saw your picture. Yeah, can you do it?" But like I've done like Nigerian Sikh and all this stuff. But like a wedding with alcohol feels like a wedding, and I'm like from a very like Muslim family where it's like yeah. there wouldn't be alcohol at the thing, yeah, and it's like course. man, it's a shame because that's a shame because. You know, you could say, you, why do you need alcohol to celebrate? Sure, you could say that. But the reality is, for an occasion like that, that many people, it loosens. Like, the dance floor is a whole different subculture in a wedding that where they're drinking versus not. And that's a crazy thing. Like, do you, I wonder, like, was dancing invented when alcohol was discovered? Like, who, like, who was dancing sober? <laughs> Yo, that's, that's what amazing. I want to know. Who was dancing <laughs> fucking sober? I'm like, nah. Alcohol, man. This guy's just dancing by himself. Like, what a loser. You probably That's the first guy to just be gone in that. That's the first yeah. like, a, a case of mental health issues. Yeah, this guy, is, guy what dancing is he, sober. What is he doing to this music? You're supposed to sit down and listen. As soon and as it, alcohol was invented, it's like, <laughs> oh. Oh, this guy got it. Yeah. Okay. My man. The, do you I like uh, seeing weddings? Um, Because I do this full time, it's literally like uh, a cash grab. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, um, to me, like now when I do weddings, I I I set a ridiculous price. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if they say yes, then they say yes. Then they then I say yes. That's amazing. So, so like it's to a point where like I'll be like, ah, do I want to do this? And I'm like, I don't want to do this. And then this will it'll cost me this to leave my house. And this is London, so I'm driving two hours. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So homie got me a hotel room and everything. So it's dope. So I'm Dude, bringing um, I'm bringing my girl. I'm like she's they're like come. It, the crazy thing about this wedding is there's only gonna be thirty people. What the fuck? Yeah, it's money. Yeah, it's money d- involved. Yeah, huh? so um, t- it's two engineers getting married. Yeah, right. They're white. They're they're white. <laughs> That's yeah, the twist. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're and they're white. That's funny. Uh, um, thirty yeah. person wedding. They said bring the family. You all eat. He, he was like, uh, he's like, I got you a hotel room, man, because I know you are coming from Toronto. I was like, okay, and he's like, uh. Uh, we're gonna have food and drinks. You're more than welcome to indulge and like and have and have fun with us. You know what I mean? Like, I I want you, blah blah blah. And apparently this guy was a big fan of mine. Like he always every time oh. I, I headlined Yuck Yucks London, he was he in kept, the crowd. He's always coming, right? Yeah. So he hit up Yuck Yucks. He's like, I want this guy to. That's oh, sick. Yeah. Then he'll pay whatever the cost. Is exactly. So you. and then Yuck's was like, like, you want to do this? I was like, yeah, let's raise it up like uh for more a hundred bucks. Like, you know what I mean? I was, I was yeah, like, yeah. let's raise it up a little bit. So then uh, yeah, and then so I called. So every time I do these weddings. Um, I call the groom or the bride. And I'm like, is there things you want me to stay away from? Is yeah. there like how many kids are going to be there? Like how clean do you want me to be? Is so you do stand up out of them all? Um, I like for this one, um, I'm not even hosting. Oh, it's I'm just, just stand up. I'm, I'm a set, yeah. Oh, so the DJ is going to be like, all right, we have a special guest comedian. Are you doing like 30 minutes or? 35, bro. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, and they want it. Wedding, everyone's drinking. The and love. they yeah. want. And the crazy thing is, there's no kids. It's yeah. literally like a small private function. Show. 
Yeah, and the best thing about it is I told the guys why I do weddings. I have like bits about like looking like a 16 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the best thing about this job is like, I tell the guy, I'm like, oh, mind you, I'm going to come in comedy club attire. Is that okay? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I go, it's part of the act. It's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I can't say I look like I'm 19 with a fucking suit on. <laughs> right? Yeah, whoa. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. then he's like, yeah. So I, I managed to find a loophole to like, <laughs> to dress down, to yeah. be comfortable on these fucking like, like I saw what you were wearing at that wedding. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you were yeah, by yeah. the patty, yeah, yeah, podium yeah, yeah. and everything, bro. Like this bro. guy. The way you're doing it, as funny, just yesterday, I, the way, the gigs I'm getting, man, first of all, I'm not charging enough. And yeah. it's my own fault. You know what I mean? It's my own fault. I'm just trying to stay alive. So yeah, but everybody I, I has to do that. Everybody I know, I know. But I literally was fantasizing about yeah. what you just said where I was driving. I'm like, man, one of these days, I'm just going to fucking change the price to a thing yeah. where, because I don't need to be doing this. Because yeah. yesterday, bro, the fucking mom... Was yeah. pulling me shit. You MC, so like MC, please stand in the port. The children they're playing the the, the candles. They will. Do. So I'm just like there's 500 people. I'm not supposed to start yet, but she demanded I stand at the podium. <laughs> okay, so, what the so it's what? just little. I'm like, man, I'm getting underpaid and I'm dealing with this shit. Like, yeah, I'm like, man, one of these days I'm gonna fucking change the price. So if they want, like have the value built into it so it's like if you want to pay yeah. it i'm all there but otherwise i'm like what am i doing man i'm fucking yeah driving so much like i don't even want to say what it is but i know i'm get, like no i I'm understand screwing myself and, and then the crazy thing is like though like we're also obviously in different positions in our career right so i mean like um what what i used to do is as a hustle was like i used to like you know i used to sell dope so I, I, I used to do it like how I used to do dope. So when I used to sell Coke, yeah. okay. I, Damn, I, that's, that's I, the... Know, so Coke was a different thing. So I, I used to slang. You were full-fledged. You were fully I'll, licensed. I'll full-fledged hustler. <laughs> yeah. Full-fledged hustler. Finger nip, fingertips are very numb when you bag up the work. Uh, so what I would do was, I was such an asshole. I would go to places like... like and I deserve to get arrested when I got. It. So uh, <laughs> what I would do was like, you know those guys who are like Friday Friday Coke guys, like they don't they don't do Coke. Gotcha. Um, like Just whatever, in whatever, right? So I would thing. come to these these places, and I'd be like, Yo, man, you want to do, want to do a quick little? You want to do a quick little? And I don't do it, right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, you want to do a quick little? I got this little thing. You want to do a quick little? You, you don't give someone who does Coke one line. Yeah. Oh. That's it. They're yeah, done. They're done. Yeah. The yeah. night they're yours. So it's like that's what exactly what I used to do. So with comedy, I'd be like, here's a freebie, here's a cheap one, kill it, and then like, yo, could you come back? Well, here's the thing, now, man. I did you the favor the first time. You know, I was free. I got something else going on. But yo, I could cancel that for your gig if you only stole me. Pop, 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 pop. And if they say no, guess what? Who gives a fuck? Who gives you're, a fuck? You're at where you're at. Exactly. You started with the day where exactly where you started. There's no like, you know, and if the guy's like, yeah, sure, you're X amount of dollars up. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, dude, the, uh, that is where I want to be. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is CRB and the, like this is, <laughs> benefit is disappearing. Yeah. And now I'm picking up like cheap fucking weddings. I'm, uh, I got like three lined up this month and I'm like, I already, th yeah. after yesterday was the first one. Yeah. Since COVID and shit. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, I have two more, right? Yeah. And after I'm driving back from yesterday, I'm like, fuck, I knew I'm fucking undercharging. This is not worth it. This is not worth it. It all depends, man. It's like, do you know these people personally? No, none of them. Oh, fuck, yeah. None yeah, of them. No, it's man. all Kijiji. It's all Kijiji and Gig Salad and like random websites where you go, I am seeing there's a picture of me with a suit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, man, that's how you do your gigs, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I haven't been long uh, long enough in the game that there's word of mouth and I did this guy's wedding and it's coming back. I You got to put in a, lo a lot of years before yeah. it comes back. Like the pipeline is like that. For yeah. me, it's like Kijiji. Uh, but I think you're going to get there, man. And I'll be honest with you. When we did that show last weekend, and I saw your name on the, the list, I was, I was hyped. I was fuck like, yeah. yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, man. And, and, you know, because I haven't seen you since Cadillac Lounge. And I was more, and like to me, like, you know, I'm also a show producer. Yeah. So yeah, I can't. Yeah. Bear jokes. I, I can't, yeah. And I can't, you know, I can't hire fucking five headliners to chuck cards up the ass. I want, you got to fucking, you know what I mean? I'm not saying you're not a headliner. I'm no, not no, saying, I'm, I'm saying, not. I'm not. You but I mean, that. like, I want to see who's coming. You need the whole coma. spectrum. Yeah, you need the whole spectrum. Yeah. And, 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 like, look at fucking Jay Z, man. He kept, he kept saying relevant because he kept collabing with up and coming artists. If you notice that. Oh. Every single fucking album, this guy's collaborating with new artists like UGK. Then one album, he's doing Kid Cudi, J. Cole, Drake. The next album, he's doing all of You know what I mean? Like, you think that's a secret? Because his verses are still fire. I think no, that. but the verses are fire, but he stayed, he stayed doing tracks with people who are relevant. Hmm. Who didn't? 
Nas Wu Tang. Nas, you're right. right. But, but that, if you think about, like, if you watch Jay Z's albums, look at his albums. He went from like like the Black album. He had pretty much everybody, every hot producer. I've been listening to the Black album nonstop. Yeah, but remember that was perfect. what ninety nine, two thousand one, two thousand one, two thousand one. Yeah, something. But like who did he have on that? Ju- Just Blaze, Neptunes. He didn't have DJ Premier, fucking Jay Dilla, like the guys he had on Reasonable Doubt. He didn't stick with the same old producers. Oh, you're right. He went Timbaland. Right. Timbaland. He went, like I he, think he went. There up. might have been the Neptunes. I yeah, forget. Yeah. So like, he kept moving up with the thing. So I feel like, you know, with my strategy and with producing a show strategy, it's like I notice a lot of these guys will just use the same dudes or the same type of like, no, you know, like yeah. you know, like uh, um, like the the. Crimson Wave, all these people, like all these, like they got uh, the same small pool of people yeah, that just, just keep going. And click, yeah. And the thing with me is, like, I'm not about, um, you know, I'm not about uh, checking boxes. It's funny. That's one box. Oh, you're saying okay? I need two women, uh, black, and like you're yeah, saying, like no, that? I don't, I don't. Because the thing is, like, I only say we need a, a girl because we have girls in the audience. Yeah, they need to hear to reflect the, like they need yeah. someone to reflect their experience. Yeah, but like I'll, I had this argument with another kind of like uh, up and coming comic, and they were like, you know, you got to put more people of this that on the shows, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna just throw somebody on based on their creed, like, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna. Oh, yeah, I'm that's not, you end up like CBC. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna. But it, it's like you know, you're Pakistani, right? No, I'm Sudanese. Sudanese, Sudanese. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry. So. Wouldn't like let's say you're watching, yeah. you know you're what you're you're you know, um, wouldn't you want like let's say you're a kid, wouldn't you want someone who's speaking on your voice to be an experienced artist, someone who knows what the fuck yeah. they're doing? You're not gonna give this show, okay? You know what if what if we get this thing? You know, let's say we get this up and coming new Filipino dude, right? He's fucking he's up and coming, but he's not he can't hang with everybody else, and he brings all these Filipino people who want to see him, and he bombs, and it's like. Well, we got him because he's this new Filipino guy, but he doesn't have a voice. He doesn't, you know, he's not. Vet- now it's just like, okay, the one guy that we got to represent didn't represent. Yeah, he bombed. Yeah, now it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, now it's embarrassing. Bro, on that exact note, I've only yeah. done Nubian in one time, yeah. like three years ago. I got booed off stage. Okay. Get the fuck out of here. I got here. booed off stage. What am I doing? Bro, this I was podcast? so scared. What am I here? What am I, here? I, don't, I, don't, I don't associate with guys getting boomed off Nubian. Yo, 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 no, he no, just, he, imagine he leaves. Next is just a video of me alone. So uh, Keith, Keith left. Uh, uh, something came up. It, it came wasn't up. related to the Nubian thing. That was wasn't it? related yeah, to yeah. the t- 2017 yeah. bomb. No, but, uh, but yeah, bro, I, uh, I made it to the almost last minute of my seven minutes and then got i just was in my head i got scared i was like who'd you go after i was second hisham kaladi was bullet he did fine and it was one of those nights where uh uh kenny goes do uh, do not accept mediocre comedy if you do not like them make them know it or something like that nah. so like you know what i mean so i was like i was shaking in the bathroom it was the first time honestly i can't picture you getting booed though Bro, I was I got booed. Like I have it on video. I'll show, I'll show you. After. I'll show you after, bro. Why would you keep that footage? Because well, I'm like I'm like one day, ten years from now, I'll be like, yo, I got booed there. But but right now, it still hurts. This but, guy's gonna you're gonna be the type of guy who'll hold on your wedding marriage after a divorce. Yeah, 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 watching yeah, it every look, Friday. Look at that, yeah. Yo, boss, what are you saying tonight? I'm watching my my ex wife's wedding video. Yo, yo that was the moment, time. man. <laughs> Everything was good then, man. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but right when I got on stage, look, I ma- I almost made it through my set. Yeah. I got scared. I fucking started like doing big gaps between my punch yeah. and the booze came and I just fucking, you know what? I don't know if you've ever been booed, but like it, it hit me hard. It hits you like a, bro, I watched all those years. I watched Down to Earth yeah. with uh, Chris Rock <laughs> and I Great saw movie. the boo in the Apollo Theater and what's funny is in that moment I was getting booed because I looked out there <laughs> booing me and what you don't know about a boo is there's a, a wave of heat. It's not just sound. A wave of heat comes, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! It's like heat and sound. And it was surreal because I right away was thinking of Chris Rock and the yeah. Apollo Theater. And Kenny, I looked at him, and he wouldn't come back up. He was looking at me on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like experiencing for eight more seconds. But the point is, right when I got on that stage, I, like, I went in with a nice bang. First three minutes, I was nice. But when I get on and go, yo, I'm Sudani. Any Sudanis in the house? They're like, yeah. Because six up front. Yeah. 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 Bro, 
when the boos were happening, these motherfuckers are nowhere to be seen, head down. So that's what but happens that's what when you mean. book yeah, the, the Sudani guy that fucking doesn't have what it takes. You know what I mean? But I it's honestly a, think it wasn't that. I don't think he was like, I, I need a Sudan Sudani, Sudani no, 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 guy. No, no, no. I don't yeah. think he did it for that. But yeah. I'm saying the people yeah. that were excited that yeah. I was representing them were fucking hiding their face. Exactly. When the result You don't want happened. that to happen. No, you never want that. You don't want that. And I'll tell you one thing, though. Um, you are probably in a wrong time to do the show because Kenny was noticing like the audience getting soft and like a lot of these other guys were just bombing and not getting booed so like we literally you had that night for booze bro. but but here's the thing like I remember like I think it was like 20 maybe 16 maybe 2016 2017 I think me Trix J Martin John Paul I think we we're all in the green room and we were just talking about the old like you know like cause people used to get booed yeah. and that was part of the thing <laughs> that was part of Nubian shows like you were getting booed who's getting booed today we would go we would go to the green room like okay who's getting the boo who's yeah. getting the boo uh, right so then people stopped booing I guess like I guess all like the millennials and the gen not Z that night like, bro <laughs> I, and then, and then, but from that day like we kept telling Kenny he's like yo you gotta tell your audience start booing now you gotta start telling your audience because there was some people I don't want to say names, but there was some people who deserved Should've to get booed. booed. Yeah, 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 and they're like they didn't get booed. Like even Mo Ishmael got booed. Oh yeah, bro. Mo Ishmael was the first person in my ear as I walked off that stage. That's my boy. Mad respect. Mad love yeah. to Mo Ishmael. Shout out yeah. to him. Mo Ishmael's the man. He fucking comes and grabs me right when I get off stage. He goes, bro, don't even fucking. Chris Robinson got booed. Yo, I got booed. He started listing everyone who got booed. I yeah. just get it. And then Anthony Engelbrecht is in the back. He goes, yo, you showed fear. Why'd you show them fear? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fucked up. <laughs> bro, it's fucked no, up, No, but the thing bro. with you, though, is your style is very, like, I like your style. You know, yours is like, you're a slow killer. You know what I mean? You don't, you're not like. You know, like your th that bimbap joke. I B love the bimbap. I love that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit. Like I, I went home. I told my wife about it. I'm like Yo, you gotta know, meet this guy. But this guy's funny. And I told her, and she's like, that shit is a joke. But it's like your shit is like, you know, like you have that Chris Robinson, Daniel Woodrow pace. You know, you're like, I'm gonna tell this, and I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? And it's like. No, but no, you're not waiting yet. Yeah, you're yeah, not yeah, waiting yeah, yeah, yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get there, bro. But like that's hard in the new bin. You have to. For me, at that time, I bro. To be honest, I lost before I even got on stage. Yo, I down. walked in. You know, yucks. You yeah. open the curtain. Yeah. I walk in, sold out. Like people standing right away in my and head. I was defeated. Like nightclub too. Right? right away, I was defeated. And when Kenny goes, "Do not accept mediocre comedy if you do not like them." This and everyone, like motherfuckers were literally barking. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> literally. I was like, "Oh!" And then you know, you lose in your head before you even get on stage. I was so scared. I was like, "You got this." You guys upstairs, like in the fucking breathing in the stall. I hear Hisham. His sets uh, wrapping up. I'm like, "It's all you. It's all you. It's all you. It's all you." It's you. It's like an eight mile. <laughs> I mean, eight, pure yeah, yeah. eight mile. He's got like, yak in the yeah, 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 yeah. Mom spaghetti and shit. Yo, you ready, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah, I'm ready, man. Yo, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a cool Kenny Kenny story though. Like I always tell this story. Uh, there was one time. Light that um, thing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gonna light this. Um, there was one time where uh, I don't know if I should say it. Fuck it. Um, it's all good. It's all cool. It's respect. No, I don't like the guy either. But <laughs> this you got guy, your own little. This guy bombed. What are you right? talking about, Kenny? Or you talking no, about no, 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 yeah, no. This guy random. Nubian, some random guy. He doesn't do comedy no more. But I think he's doing comedy in Montreal. Nice. Is that where they go? <laughs> I think that's where they go. Yeah. Um, but he was one of these guys where, like, he was a smart black guy, but he was he would uh, talk down to his own people. Oh yeah, it got right. you exactly. So, See, a lot of y'all don't even get it. It's like this. I'm gonna break it down for y'all tonight. <laughs> not even. He's like, oh, so you don't get it? And like he oh. was just a pretentious ass. Oh okay, not the type who go, my brother. Yeah, my brother. Yeah, and he pronounces R, so it sounded like a white guy was con like was was yelling at you. Gotcha. Okay, that's so funny. That's the little things yeah. non communists don't know. It's like yeah. you gotta lighten up on the R's or <laughs> you gotta lie. Uh, you, you can't say killer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the Virginia primary. Like this guy <laughs> yeah. was just like you know just just doing all this stuff. And then um, if you need that lighter, um, so he bombs. He breaks Kenny's balls for eight months, almost a year. He's like, I need to get back on. I need to get back. Give me one more chance. And Kenny's like, All right, fine. I'll give me one more fucking chance. So Kenny puts him up first. 
right? So, you know, I'm I'm this headliner, right? Yeah. So I see the list. Rare occasion. I go, I'm second, Kenny? I go, I'm second? He goes, yeah, come here, come here, kid, come here. He takes me to the stairs. You know, y'all catch the stairs. Kenny, big guy. Yeah. In his fucking suit, crosses his arms. He looks down at me. He's like, all right, kid, what were you planning on doing today? And I was like, uh, Great impression. I was like, I was going to do some new shit that I was killing that I haven't done here. I got this new one about this, that. He's like, nah, fuck all that. <laughs> this kid's been breaking my balls to get back on the show. Right? No, sorry, I wasn't. I was first. He was second. So yeah. I was like, oh, I'm first. What oh, the fuck? that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so you bury I, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm first. Yeah, sorry. That, that was a big point of the story. I fucked up. So I'm, I was early. I was first. And he was second. And then he's like, um, what do you want to do? So I thought you were passing. Uh, he's like, what do you want to do? So I was like, I, I got this. He's like, nah, fuck all that. This kid's been breaking my balls. <laughs> I want you to get him booed. I'm like, what? It's like, you ever watch the end of like Karate Kid or, or Mighty Ducks when the kid's injured? It's like, go sweep the yeah. leg. Sweep like, the, but sensei. No, yeah. sweep the leg. <laughs> yeah. but, I love that, bro. So he was like, he was, he was telling me that. So he's like, nah, do your best shit. Pretend NBC's out there. <laughs> I'm like, all right. He's yeah. like, this is why I booked you. I need you to be a killer. I want you to kill this guy's fucking dreams right now. Like, bad. I was like, okay. You better believe it, bro. You brought I, it. Listen, Kenny is Kenny's an OG. That's my that's that's my fucking godfather right there. This motherfucker told me to take somebody out. You better believe I took him out. Yeah, bro, this guy. I was doing crowd work, bro. I was doing everything, dude. <laughs> you did a backflip at one point, <laughs> bro. There could have been a smoke machine and yeah. bats, bro. Yeah. I could have disappeared <laughs> into, into a, bro. It was magic and shit. It, it was looking like Prince playing basketball. You know what I mean? It was, it was just so good. It's like what the fuck. And and uh, the crazy thing about it was. This guy didn't even last. Like he didn't even last. Like I think his first joke. Oh, they booed him off the top. And they're just like, <laughs> but Kenny set him up too. He's like, all right, guys, that's Keith Pedro. He's a killer comic, and he's one of the best killers, and and he's one of the killers that you're never gonna boo. But if you don't like good comedy, here's Steve. Start booing. <laughs> Yo, all fuck. right, your next comic coming to stage. Oh, he wanted him booed. He wanted him booed. Yeah. And the, and what people don't realize who are listening to this, even though this, this sounds mean, is that. If this kid who, you know, I don't know his name, let's call him Steve. If Steve is like, really wants to be a comedian, this is the best thing that could have happened for him. Oh, 100%. If he really, truly wanted to be a comedian, this would be like reality check, one-on-one, yeah. pace yourself. Like, you know what I mean? But otherwise, this is the type of thing that makes people go rethink no, I, everything. I, I want, and then, and then um, yeah, like, like Black Zeus, homie. Love Zeus. Love that guy. So then Kenny's like, yo, I'm going to throw you right before Black Zeus. And Black Zeus That's came That's a strength in metal, though. You but know what Zeus, I mean? This is Zeus. Yeah, this yeah, is Black yeah, Zeus. Yeah, yeah. This is the homie. He can handle himself. And, but yeah. He can, but this is what, what I love about this guy. He came up to We were smoking a spliff in the back, and he gave up to me. He's like, yo, go in. I'm like, what? He's like, go in. I want to see if I can follow you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, bro. But I love that. I was like, "Yo, okay." And I went in, and then I, and then I even point out to the audience. I go, "This next comic coming up wanted me to bury him, so this next joke is for him." Like I, I ended on a banger just for him. And Zeus was in the in the corner. And he shook his head, but he held. Did his he own. carry the energy? No, he carried. Yeah, he held yeah. on. He did great, man. Hell and then yeah. I went up to him after. And I was like, "Yo, not a lot of guys would have done that. Not a lot of guys would have took the easy way the out." The comedian, Black Zeus. Shout yeah, out Black to Zeus. Zeus. Black, shout out to Black Zeus, man. Shout check out. out if you don't know Black Zeus, check out his podcast, Black Zeus the podcast. I have the motherfucker back on soon. Yeah, he's very he's funny, man. Uh, love his social media presence. Just a fucking good, positive guy, man. Dude, the whole Nubian for people, and I've talked about the Nubian because I like. Ooh, I had this podcast going when I got booed. Yeah. <laughs> so I had an episode yeah. like, okay, so that was a weird, uh, <laughs> weird Sunday. You know yeah. what I mean? But like. Like, the Nubian show that's been, you know, obviously, I don't know what will happen to it. I'm assuming it'll pick up back up at some yeah. point for sure. It but, to. like, it is a whole subculture, man. It is a subculture. It's the most, like, Apollo theater thing here in Toronto. It's probably one of the best rooms in, in Canada. I've done a lot of rooms in Canada. And, you know, I remember I was headlining at Halifax, Yuck Yucks. And they were like, yo. And, you know, when you do a... a there's so many comics, so when you do a spot on Yucks on uh, Nubian, it's not the best pick. You know what I mean? It's, it's, what do you mean, like it's five five to seven? 
Like you're talking about time? Uh, no, like the pay. On oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like not 25, the pay. Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's like whatever, right? That's the worst part is after I got booed, I was about to leave. And they're like, no, 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 you ain't going nowhere. You stay till the end of the show to get paid. And now I'm in the green room with motherfuckers <laughs> eating wings, trying to like not contribute to the conversation at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can't get booed and be in the green yeah. room. And then, like, and then, so I was doing the show. <laughs> and then they're like, do you want a headline? Another Sunday. We're going to add a Sunday show. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm flying back to do Nubian. Not even headlining. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. That's I'll, the type of show it is. That's the type of show it is. Because I was in Halifax for the whole week. And I'm like, I've been dancing for these white people all week. I go, I need to end this weekend with my soul. <coughs> and that's the thing. It's not just the show itself. That it's always sold out of people that like know the culture of the show. But it has, <coughs> excuse me, so many comedians that are like loyal, like that level loyal to it. Like it's always got a group yeah. of like, it's the most show that has headliners hanging out. Also too, like back in the day, man, like, dude, I remember uh, going to a Nubian show and like the the, the back um, booths were like Cardinal and like one time fucking, um, um, it was during TIFF. And yeah, like yeah. George Clooney showed up. Like, you know, like, yo, Nubia? like, yo, fucking, yo, crazy. Like, just met random people. Fucking DMX and Anthony Anderson showed up to Nubian what when the they fuck? were filming uh, Exit Wounds. Oh, yeah. In, I'm in like, why would those two motherfuckers Fucking be? Uh, Mackay Pfeiffer and uh, Cameron showed up when they were doing fucking Paid in Full in, in Toronto and Hamilton when they were shooting at some of the air. So, Jesus, I thought it was McCall Calkin. <laughs> like, I was, I was like, what the fuck? But Nubian is that type of show. It's, it's that type it's, of show. It's like, the, it's like the boxing fight. It's like our MGM Grand. It's like this vibe. But I also like how it's one day in a month. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that's the whole like, point, I think. Yeah, and, and the crazy thing is you see how they get up, how people dress. Like, it's like they dress people to go to dress, a nightclub. It's old school. Yeah. Where pe it's, like, it's like people flying in the 60s, 70s, man. They're fucking like... Oh, Everyone man. brings the, their hot date. You know what I mean? Like, this is the night, Nubian. Oh, 100%. To be honest, I have a weird, like, I've only ever been booed there. And I've I'm, I'm been doing, this is like my fifth year. Do you know what it is, man? You didn't say bumbaclot enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's very Jamaican, for it's sure. Very, very Caribbean driven very show. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not like I've done black shows in the States, totally different from the black shows here. Like, th some of the hottest black comics will come to Nubian show and they won't do well. Because they're like black and Nubian is like uh, what Caribbean. Yeah. But, Nubian. but they also don't want just regular jokes. No, if I went now I, 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 and, I, and I did all of the stuff that I think is my best stuff and I did seven minutes, I don't think, I don't think I'd be like, oh, this guy killed the hardest in the show by any means. But I don't think I would get booed. Cause yeah. I, cause now I've been on that stage. I've been in front of the people. All of that unknown and fear yeah. is gone. The worst thing happened. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? The crazy thing the with The worst me, thing happened. So. I haven't had, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had one of those experiences yet. I know like a lot of guys like Chris Robinson and like, you know, Jay Martin and like. OGs. And that ship may have sailed, ha, by the way. Ha, 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 it's had that. It's like, what? I hope. I better not go on a Tonight Show. It better not happen when I've made it. I think that ship has sailed. Once uh, you hit like that plus 10 year like veteran like status. We all, yeah. Well. Like to the, get that type of booed where by the way when they boo you they they also jack up the music yeah, so it's 100%. like so it's like and i'm like at the, the first four seconds of the boo i was like no 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 and then like i thought i was gonna get like a slide a chance back in and then the music started and the boo continued and kenny stood and i was like damn this is fucking like chris rock at fucking down to earth but yeah like it, I, it, but back to that it's like I love that how you're like, yo, the worst thing happened already. Yo, you can't kill me, motherfucker. I'm already dead. You know what I mean? It's like you you're right. So And a like, worst boo comes, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I mean imagine no. that. No, I've I've watched your shit, man, and I, forget about my shit. Black Zeus told me the hardest he ever saw anybody kill was tricks at Nubian and that people were running up to the back wall to hit it <laughs> when he was killing. Oh man. I mean he uh I've I've been upstairs in the green room and um, the fucking floor shakes when certain people are killing. Like I've seen Nathan do that. Nathan McIntosh, white boy, you know murder I mean? that hard. Murder that hard. I've seen Arthur Simeon murder that hard. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I was mean, there one time he murdered that hard. Yeah, yeah. it was like I remember one time I did a joke and a guy ran on the stage and gave me a dap. 
And he was like in row six. Like it was, <laughs> and he had to like go excuse through. Me, excuse, me, excuse, me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. My guy. Bam! <laughs> like, you right. know how hard it is to keep that energy sustained for six rows? <laughs> yeah. Excuse <laughs> me. But uh, it is one of my, like I have my first Nubian tape, like uh, record I put on YouTube. And this is like, you know, this is the VHS the video camera with the fold out. You know what I mean? With the, you know, this is the old can- this is a, a throwback. This is a th- I think it was like 08. And I remember I, I, I had one joke pop so hard. It took him like, if you, if you can, it's like 54 seconds. It's different applause breaks and laughs. And really? Like, I, I'm, I'm watching it like on the YouTube thing. I'm, I'm clicking it and I'm just like, that's how much the energy is. That's fucking crazy, man. That's wild. Yeah. And then now, that's like, sick to be able to go back and look at the actual numbers breakdowns of it. Yeah, because it's crazy, man. And the thing though with me though, and that's the thing that I, when I was doing that, I was already at Yuck Yucks, and on the Wednesdays, and like, yo, come on, and I'm like, nah, I'm not ready. And then you know, one of the other bookers, she saw me, I knew, and she's like, no, you're ready. I'm like, no, that's Nubian. I'm not ready. You know what I mean? I'm not ready to do this showcase for for national Canada. Fucking, you know what I mean? And then. After, I think, the fourth year, I said, yeah, let's do it. And my seven minutes was top to bottom, fucking Illmatic, you know? And then, boom, I got fucking Hubcap Comedy Fest, Halifax Comedy Fest, fucking. I pretty much got everything but Just for Laughs. That's so fucking sick. You know That's saying? smart, man. I haven't heard anybody do it like that. That's but old like, school. But why is everybody, but here's the thing, like, everybody's rushing to kill now. But what people don't understand with comedy is, like, just never, you never, you can never go to YouTube and see 12-year-old Comedian prodigy, stand up, because comedy is an old man's game. Yeah, 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 there's a couple like 14 year old smashes, and it's like all his parents and their friends there. And he's yeah. funny and he wrote some funny shit, but it's like he's it's not impre- going to smash an arena, you know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's like, impressive he because needs to he's connect. 14. Yeah, yeah, he needs to, yeah. Like, he's like, oh, he needs life experience to connect with that many people. Exactly. Like, another thing is like, um, my homegirl, shout out to Aisha Brown, like, she came late in the game but because she was also like experienced in life she just came as a killer right off the top so you notice when people stop start comedy at a late age or at at a at a a younger age totally different you know what i mean there's a totally different comedian right because that younger dude what's he talking about dick come jizz dick come jizz oh yeah right i've noticed this so and then other people like i could tell you uh, three or four comics who got funnier just by having a baby just by doing mature stuff and living like adult life. And, and you know, because not everybody can relate to a comic's lifestyle. You know what I mean? Not everybody can relate. Cause You're at right. The, at the end of the day, it's like, if you notice a lot You're of right. comics who are so been in the game, but they have no family, they, they're single. And it's like, it's so hard to them to relate to the audience. Because this guy wakes up at 5 p.m. Does laundry by himself? It's like who's do, who's living that life? You're you're in an audience at three hundred people and nobody like there's maybe two of them are doing that because <laughs> they're like you know you're so right man right so like with that being said like everybody's like I want it's when, well like Nitty Sack shout out to Nitty Sack who just got JFL new faces we were in Vancouver and he was just talking about it I'm like how come they ain't, I ain't gonna fucking with me I'm like you don't want them to fuck with you wait. I go think about how much, like, 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 like how I said, much like, better you'll be. Like, let's say you got right now. Like, let's say when did when did you get Nubian? When did you get booed off Nubian? I think it was um, January of nineteen or December of twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, imagine if you got JFL that year. And oh, for yeah, us yeah, to yeah. now, oh, yeah. wouldn't you be like, I'd rather get it now? Yeah, I don't even I don't think I should be getting it right now. No, but, but I'm saying yeah, though, yeah, like, yeah, but in yeah, terms oh, of exactly. material, like, in terms oh, fuck, of I got saved. Stuff, stuff, stuff I got happened. saved. Because what a lot of people don't know is that when you do a recording, you burn that material. Yeah, I know. I'm very aware of so that. So some people don't I mean? know that. They're yeah. like, wait, I have to give them? It's like, yeah, man, what do yeah. you think, bro? Yeah. You were just come and kill it. It's a and thing that's, that's c- clearly visible on YouTube. It's what people yeah. watch before they come see you and you do this. That's why comedy is the hardest game. Comedy is 100% the hardest game in terms of any performer. Because we can't, we can't, first of all, we can't perform our classics. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can't perform. Snoop Dogg could come on stage right now and do Gin and Juice. Yeah. And half the audience will sing it with him. Yeah. yeah. That's all great. You think fucking we don't have that Eddie type of Murphy attention. could come in and, and, and do some of his old band? You think Chris Rock could do like black people versus and we're like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like he can't. Bullets and shit. Because the 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 what makes it funny is that element of surprise. Once that surprise is gone, it's not funny no more. And it takes the value We have the least job. retention out of all the yeah. arts. Yeah. Bro, we can't do covers. We can't do fucking you know what I mean? We can't do old hits. 
People you know? just remember that you're funny. You know, that's, it. that's what grows. They're trusting you to be funny. But then, when you blow up as a comedian, you got to do things that are not even involved. What are you doing? They're like, can you act? Can you write a script? You're like, you just saw me do write stand up jokes. Now you want me to act and write a script? Like, what the fuck? Like, I man? have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when they find a rapper, they're like, they're like, oh, you're a rapper? Oh, sick. Can you direct a video? <laughs> you know, can you make beats? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you install we a need studio? A multifaceted person. <laughs> yeah. Man. But what you said about the <coughs> the age, that's yeah. so true. I've yeah. actually noticed that because like when I first got into the game, like I so I went to school for engineering, yeah. finished engineering, worked in the industry for three years. Yeah. And the last year of it was doing open mics at the same time. Like at night. Yeah, I read that on your bio. And then yeah. you were doing some shows in the States. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That like I I lived there. It was just like I lived in like outside Detroit. I would go into Detroit to do some stuff and then San Francisco. So I'd be in that area. How do you Oakland. feel about Detroit? How do you feel about that city or Michigan? I like it, man. It's great. It has got character. You know, it's now great. living down there, you realize what a city with character. Detroit is a city that mo like a lot had a huge exodus, you know, yeah. upon like their poor economic times. Yeah. But the people that stuck around, a lot of them have a vibe like Detroit will live. We will rebuild. Yeah. You know, that's their actual vibe. Yeah. You know, it, he, nobody is tied to Toronto like that. <laughs> People may yeah. like the Raptors or like something like that, but nobody's huh. like, we will build Toronto, rebuild. Like if no, something happens. I, I right think now. another reason for that with Toronto is because they destroy everything. And it's so it, new, the it, city. It, yeah. They like, destroy History everything. wise, yeah. how long has Toronto been around relative it to it? Like, it hasn't been a long time, but I feel like everything historically has now been a condo. So that's another reason why people are, don't care about the city because it's. It, I feel like its own like leaders and like, Big movers shit, don't even give a fuck about it. You know what I mean? It's like, like look at fuck Madison Square Garden, bro. It's a love loss now. I mean, I mean a Maple Leaf Garden. It's a love loss now. You're right. You know what I mean? What so it's, it's all capitalism, bro. When I was in Chicago, they still had, they had like there was two, I think a church and, and another building that survived the, that fire, that big Chicago fire. Like yeah, how years, long? Like, was like, like 1800s or something? I don't yeah. know, 1600s. I don't know what the fuck. Like it was horrible. It, like, it was a lantern that fell, and it lit. It hit the whole fire. The Destroyed whole the town whole, was made of straw. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, exactly what happened. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. It was a horse, lantern. They're like, that's what happened. after this, okay? And, and that's that how shit old lights it was. on fire too. But with that being said, uh, when I was there in Chicago, my homie was like, no, that's one of the one buildings that survived. that survived it. So we kept it. And I'm like, that would have been a condo in Toronto yeah, yeah, yeah. in two seconds, bro. <laughs> Brad J. Lamb would have been like, nah, son. <laughs> Turn that into a four-story <laughs> like, condo. Yeah, cut it. <laughs> cut it down. They're doing that at the budget review. They're like the the parks department is is really pushing for us to hold on to this asset. So yeah. so cut it, cut it down, <laughs> yeah. and we'll leave Put some on of the, the roof yeah. on top. Because yeah. you know when you go to like the Loblaws at Mad Maple Leaf Garden, they have just the some of the roof. chairs, the, yeah. some of the original chairs. Fuck you! Like really, you gutted this place. You put yeah. you you're just gonna leave some of the original chairs right by the by right by the fucking carts. That's the respect you're gonna get. It's like when the Native Americans <laughs> got taken over. It's like, we'll just leave a couple of teepees in honor. Yeah. We'll leave a couple of teepees. Some wish, uh, uh, what's it called? The dream. Yeah. Dream, dream catchers. The dream catchers. That's pretty much what they did. Yeah, man. That's just whole, that's, that's another fucking thing. This is the first time that we've smoked a, a joint. This is Chris sitting in the studio right here. Yeah, I nice. if the Oh, in the new studio, in the new spot? Oh yeah, I mean this is episode two or three from this one. Okay. Side. Oh nice. Yeah, bro. No, I'm feeling it, man. And congrats on the uh, on the success on the podcast and everything, man. And your online shit is killing right Thanks, now. Thanks, man. It's moving. It's but moving. It's it's yo for real. A lot of guys don't, um, such as myself, like they don't commit to the online presence. Like I, the thing with me is like I don't know where I fit. I don't know how to. I don't know how to like, you know, get in. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's weird. Bro, that's yeah. what you constantly have to ask yourself. That's the yeah. fucking problem with it. I yeah. knew how to get in. When I yeah. had that total absence of stand-up, yeah. I knew how to make a video that could, that could do well. Yeah. But now that stand-up has returned, yeah. I don't get it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, yeah. but it's just not the same. And it's, you know what it is? My, my need, the need to succeed at it disappeared because yeah. now I have stand-up. Now I can just go back to actually working on my material, rebuilding my act. Yeah, that can be that became a hobby at yeah, one point. Yeah, and now it's like, like I do stuff and people are like, ha ha. But before they're like, yo, you it's know. It's like model cars. <laughs> you still building? No. The world is open. Yeah, now. exactly. Why do I need to play with Lego? Exactly. <laughs> you know. But, but I don't get it. I kind of don't get it. Like I know what it takes, but it's like the amount of work I'm just like. 
the thing with me though is like it's crazy because I think it's hilarious when like especially these like so called influencers because they're always like yo I don't work for nobody I'm an entrepreneur and da 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 and it's like yeah but you you're working for algorithms and you're editing videos constantly like yeah you're like, I, I hang out with one of my homies and he does all this shit and I'm like you're too much man yeah. I can't. You know, you gotta like you put everything on blast. I can't lie to anybody. <laughs> I can't. I can't cancel on anybody on excuse me hanging out with you. Fucking, you know. And, and the thing too, I was like, and he's also like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go edit this, and I gotta go. Uh, yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta repost this for later. I go, your camera roll first of all must be a lot. That's yeah. That's like that's a whole nother thing. Like this storage memory. That's a whole like. But like, I'm not that. I'm not knocking those guys. Like, do do your thing. That is it. That's just not me. That's the one thing now that's holding me back. So I've gotten doing one episode a week down to a system for the most part. And when I moved and I got like I just got a fucking second monitor and little shit like that. Yeah. You readjust, but you get it back to a system, right? Yeah. But I was like, should I now I have this dedicated space in my house, right? It's not dedicated. Like I have my just regular computer right here. But uh I'm like, sh- should I do two episodes a week because I have this right here? Should I not use it for two episodes a week? Is my question to myself. Yeah. But then I'm like, man, that'll double my editing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what am I gaining? I'm just giving more content out at the exchange of my life. And it's like, I'm not that interesting that people need two a week. Even though I'm like, yeah. I should give them more. <laughs> yeah. I'm also like, the amount of editing, I'm going to end up becoming like that guy. Because right now I've got it down to like this plus Two, three hours, I can handle this episode. You know what I mean? Also, but I don't want it to become a two-day, three-day, four-day editing yeah, job. Yeah, because I'm, a, I'm pretty sure you got, like, you know, a, a girlfriend that you live with. Yeah. Who, who wants to go on these things called dates. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean? supposed like, to bike after this, bro. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I was fixing this bike, bro. But I, I, what I also noticed, too, is, is, can you imagine that guy who, like, gave everything to Vine? And he became this huge Vine star. But then, like, he missed out on, like, his prom and all these other things. And then Vine's not even a thing. And then, and he's but like, then he carries it to the next app. Yeah. But he stays in the app celebrity world. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But it's like, that's... that's it's, you're right. It's such a... It's such, now it's like, okay, now after TikTok, what's new? What, how, who's going to be the next thing? What is the next thing? And it's like, you know, as, as a, a, a stand-up comedian who that hasn't really found his niche online, I'm like, I, I don't think... Me personally, and this might not sound as like, sound like an excuse, but like, uh, I don't have that type of. I'm also a dad, man. Like, I yeah. got shit to do. Yeah. I don't have time to like learn the new uh, the new app and blah, blah blah. Like, I'll post what I, I'm good at, and if you like it, you like it, man. If, if you don't, hey man, you don't have to follow. Like, and it's just, bro. But here's the, the reality, though. Yeah. Is a younger guy. The only way I can serve myself is by doing this. You have existed in this Toronto industry yeah. for over a, like a decade. Yeah. So y- Yucks knows you. Jeff, everyone knows you by name. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot more stuff is coming to you from the regular networks of life. Yeah. But so it, you don't have that like crazy need to be like, I need it. I need this to be a, a crazy channel too. Because you got 100%. so much coming your way because of the work you've been doing for years. Oh, 100%. But I mean like, I do agree. And now... Nowadays, you you will see the internet comic on these shows. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll be like the Dave Mirage and Lily Singh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'll be like one of those, you know? But to me, it all like like comedy comedy is very subjective. So there's so many lanes, you know? And I, I feel like when I was talking to this other cat coming up, he's like, well, I don't know what I should do. Should I, should I, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, bro, find out where you want to end. What's your end goal? You know, if you want to be fucking, you know, if you want to be, you know, Patrice O'Neal, a fucking crazy, push the envelope stand up comic, but never made it to TV, never made it to movies, just a tour guy, road dog. Yeah. Didn't give a fuck about anything, including health. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? You know so what I mean? Like, like, or even like a guy like, you know, like, 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 like a Rouse, you know, like, you know, Jason Rouse. Like a yeah. wanderer. Like a fucking guy who's just, like, you know, um, like a killer, but he yeah. doesn't, he doesn't do clean shows. Yeah. He doesn't, you know what I mean? He yeah. has, or you can be like, like you know, you very niche comic. You can be, or you can be like, you know, Kevin Hart, you know, you just, you cater for families and you do movies. You just go the total like 
the yeah. biggest corporate package of money. Yeah, the corporate package. Right. But yeah. he also does like sick like. Ethnic hey, his shit, last like, special was fucking. I thought it was great. Yeah, the the it, one at his house. I, the one at his house was his best work in years. Hundred percent. That's why, bro. That's why. Like, that's why I'm like, I kind of want to see a Chris D'Elia special now. Yeah. Because like, I didn't fuck with the last bunch, but I'm like, after you fall, because I saw Louis C.K. when he came to Toronto. It was the funniest stand up I've ever seen in my life. Wow. The, after a comedian gets publicly shamed. The stand-up they do after that is their best work. But that's the other thing. That's what I hate about cancel culture. It's like you canceling somebody, but like, I want to see how they recover from the art. You know what I mean? I'm like, that's that's what they do. You know what I mean? That's. I it, didn't realize it until I saw Louis because Louis like, yeah, I was here. <laughs> Louis comes, he goes, yeah, I was here like last, uh, like a year or two ago. Yeah, I was in the arena down the street <laughs> and we're at Yucks, right? Oh, like, man, there was a <laughs> – if you watch every – like especially in our city, like I remember I was watching – um I think it was uh, maybe Nathan McIntosh or Dave Mahash or one of those guys. Uh, We were at a show and I think one of them just broke up with a girlfriend and they were just going off. It was was hilarious. And then I remember I I did Nubian show one time and this is when finding out that like we might lose all of our residuals. Remember that? Oh yeah. And everyone was was crazy. crazy. And I I just went off. And then Kenny Ross like, I I like this. Yeah. He's like, I like this. So I think that like, like, you know, hardship brings the best out of your art, especially comedy. You know, because if you're a funny guy, naturally funny guy, you're going to turn anything yes. sad into fucking funny. Like, you're going to turn all your anger into hilarity. And I feel like I would love to see, you know, I, I only heard of Louis like, his comeback jokes. And I heard some of the, like, he's like, I heard one where he says, uh, you know how it's like when Obama knows your thing? Like, uh, everybody knows your, <laughs> yeah, yeah. your fat. Like, Obama knows my shit. Like, uh, man, it's just, like, yeah, like, hearing people doing so good. Um, their, like, recoveries and shit is like, yeah, I would love to hear someone on the way down. But the only thing with me with Chris D'Elia is, like, I was never a fan of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can was, see that. I can, I can get that. But I, but, uh, I was, like, early on, I was like, man, this guy's so funny. But then, like... As the specials came out, I'm like, okay, this is just in front of his own crowd, yeah. and he's just like being high energy, and it's like I don't fuck with it. Oh, yeah. But now that I saw that Louis, like I watched that, and then I saw what's his name as as well. Who else just did a special after something like that? Aziz and sorry, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Aziz stuff. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I spaced out there. No man. It was, it was, yo, the, if you watch this podcast, people are like, yo, these guys are good. And then the joint gets going. And it's yeah. like, and so. Uh, uh, but now it's chill, So chips, whatever. huh? Yeah. Chip, no, but like, if you look, here's the thing about Chris. Here's the, how I rate comedy. Yeah. Is if you can recite the joke yeah. to somebody and they'll laugh because the idea is so funny. Gotcha. But if you if you try to recite like Chris D'Elia's jokes, you have to do it in a voice of some nature for it to be funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Right, because that's he just starts to joke normally, and then he just changes his voice. Like that's how he does his jokes. That's all. Right? So that's pretty uh, good. Um, that's all, Delia. But yeah, that's what I feel like that's what he does. But like, if you can't, you know, re-recite the idea to somebody, I feel like that's that's how I that's rate a good, my comedians. Like a litmus test for it, you know what I mean? Like a good meter yeah. for that. I remember Chris Rock used to say, like, if a joke's really good, he would do it in different tones. In different ways so i remember one time uh it was me patrick hay and matt o'brien we were all like co-headlining niagara falls and uh i lost my voice at a show and then i watched fucking uh watch the throne concert yeah and you know jay-z and kanye don't give a fuck about your life they'll do that that concert on a wednesday yeah. <laughs> oh i heard that was the great my friend saw, he said it was the best concert he's ever seen. bro i'm not gonna lie it's the only concert I ever cried at, bro. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> this is amazing. This is the best shit ever. Yo, they did this one song. I forgot this what song. Niggas are... And they were like, if you out there chasing your dream, don't you ever fucking stop. Look at us. And they started saying their whole life story, right? Oh, and he's like, my mom's dead. dead blah, blah, blah. And then they're just talking all this shit. And Jay-Z's like, I'm from Best Eye, Brooklyn. Bro, I didn't graduate. And then you know, I'm just listening to all their uh, accomplishments. And I'm just like... Yeah, man, I'm chasing my three in my fucking 364 seats, like row three, like all the way yeah. to the top. Yeah. Just like, I'm chasing it. Connected as fuck. Like, Yo, yeah. I feel Oh, that. I feel you, bro. This is it. That hits all man. like way up. Yeah, man. It was it was dope. The fuck, I missed that. My buddy said that was the best 
Yo, they did this. They to. did this thing where like they had these two. They're on two separate stages. Have you seen the video footage? No. It's un- they have it on YouTube. It's unbelievable, bro. You got to, they have it on two separate stages. This picture like a sea, a sea of fucking audience, and they had two separate stages, and it rised. The stage would rise, and they had screens on the parts of the stage, That's and so they were spitting tracks like across the fucking coliseum. You know what, what I mean? Fuck? Like it was, it was insane. But they would do it in a way where like. Like, the playlist was unbelievable. Like, if you had a Jay Z and Kanye playlist, your track order, yeah, it's exactly how they did the concert. They would do one of theirs, yeah, then one together. So that was like, so you would hear like Jay Z would do Big Pumpin, oh, and shit, you're like, ah, yeah. oh, he would do that on one stage, right? And then yeah. they'll have put lights off on this stage, right? Yeah. So then he's doing Big Pumpin, and then while he's finishing the song, the, the stage is rising low, and then the lights up, and all he hears, la, 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 la wait till I get, get my money. money. You're like, oh, oh shit, then you look, you're like, oh, damn, then he does that track. <laughs> oh, shit. And then they would, like, fucking... And then do one off Watch then, the Throne. Yeah, or, or like, uh, you know... That's or like, so like sick, they, When they did Run This Town with fucking Rihanna. Was she there? Run. No, they yeah. wasn't there, but they did that track. They did a lot of tracks that they had together, like fucking Diamonds Remix. Dude, that's so I'm not sick. a business man. Yo, yo, just crazy. Like, I'm it was a business man. man. But that was like <laughs> that concert. Yeah, the most Longer. weed lyric ever. Yeah, best weed lyric. But understand, like, no one else can say that right. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they Post got away Malone with can. They got away with it. The whole only Jay Z can do that. You know what I mean? You ever notice how much math Jay Z will break down in his songs? <laughs> Hundred percent, man. There's no other rapper out there who does as much math in his lyrics. And like Jay Z, man, you know how most people when you ask them something, especially if it creeps on the financial, mm-hmm. they'll be like, "Okay, like I'm not, I'm not gonna say numbers." Yeah, Jay Z's not afraid to say numbers. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's constantly saying what everything costs and telling you about his investments, telling you how you should invest. To, like, it's great. He's constantly giving investing advice. I like, mean, I've been trying to invest into art for quite some time, but I don't have that much money to put down. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It like, doesn't work as well on this uh, level. Uh, it doesn't, know? not as a comedian. Um, Fuck. Man. Yeah. No, I, uh, yeah. Yo, but bro, we have you on the immigrant section. I got to ask. I got to know. Go ahead. You ever been? I don't know what your, I just know you're Filipino. I yeah. don't know what your background is. I Filipino, don't know. Yeah. Okay. Did you go there? Did you stand up there? Philippines, yeah, man. Yeah, tell I have uh, Phil- so I I did some shows in the Philippines, but I did it on some of the resorts. Yeah, were your parents like born there? My parents were born there. Yeah. Okay. My okay parents okay. were born there. It's crazy. The crazy thing about me though is like, cause I'm Filipino, and uh, this is such a funny joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> but cause I'm Filipino, it's crazy. That so so when my parents came down here, um, and, and they had me, they gave me like, like, they tried to whitewash my name. You know what I mean? So it's Keith. You know what I mean? Like it's fucking. But the crazy thing, my mom's hardcore Filipino. You know so I mean? your full name is Keith. Yeah, my full name, my real name is Keith Pedro. No and real name, no gimmicks. <laughs> so they, so that's why they named you that. You're saying. So they named me Keith because when yeah. they came down here, the real estate agent was Keith, the dentist was Keith, so they thought Keith was a was a successful name. So ah. you just put it on a resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam. But that's funny smart. thing is, my mom, hardcore Filipino. You know Filipino accents. Oh yeah. They can't pronounce the th. So. It's, I'm everybody at school. Yeah, call me Keith. Hey, oh, Keith, I'm coming home. Get, hey, get, <laughs> come here, get. What this? Get. Is this your homework? Huh? Get. Like it was. It's just so crazy. So that that's like the type of fucking yeah. It's like the an type animal of, sound. <laughs> bro, exactly. Yeah, dude. And the crazy thing was, <laughs> I go to my mom one time. I go, Mom, why why does everybody assume that when I was a little kid, when I was a real little kid, I said, why is everybody spelling my name K I E? Th, because I'm you know it's ei, right? But and Keith is different ways to spell it, right? There's there's that way, right? So my mom goes, oh, there's that's another way of spelling your name, so people get confused. But you know we spell it k e i t. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I go, what other ways are there? <laughs> and I swear to God, my mom in, in in cool immigrant fashion didn't even fucking fade. She goes, you know k e i t h, k i e t h, k i t t, and I'm like. And then I just took it as a kid, you know, I was probably like in kindergarten, you know, and now because I was telling the story to my son today and like now that I think about it, I was like, why did she, what the fuck? No one spells Keith like K-I-T-T. That's Kit. <laughs> That's clearly Kit. Like, <laughs> it's just coming back. <laughs> yeah, just coming back. But yeah. So, so performing in Philippines though, yeah, that was fun. Also, 
big, big. Uh, they have a big transgender um, uh, community population in the Philippines. So a lot of the shows were a lot of drag queen uh, performances. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like very standard. Yeah, like man. a wedding would have one. Hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. Okay, like, every yeah. wedding has one. Like not every wedding. Like they do but all like, the. But like there's there's that's part of the culture. Like you know, in Indian weddings, there'll always be some sort of dance. Yeah. Like some sort of like is it will it be like a standard dancing? No, 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 no. So they have so what the Philippine tradition is. There's like something called the money dance. That's that's their thing. They have a money dance where you, you dance with the bride and groom, and people just pin dollar bills on the motherfucker. Bro, weddings always have. I the wedding I was at yesterday. I didn't know Pakistanis. They throw. They make it rain, and all the young ones who are involved that are like clearly like involved with rap culture a yeah. little bit. They throw it up like pure like uh, uh, music video oh, man. strip club like like follow through make a clap. Literally, 100%. and then like the uncles would come and they'd be throwing three at a time. <laughs> you could see the old ones. And they're making mental notes. Okay, so yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. Okay, that's Bro, it. I'm at, <laughs> I'm at the podium yesterday. You remember when the mom was like, please stand at the podium. The children yeah. are fucking around. Yeah. I'm standing. Now I'm, that's where the main family is sitting. And now I'm just kind of hearing what's happening with this main family. <laughs> One of the main guys comes to the father of the bride. He goes, clear. Clean the money up. This is when the yeah. money all has fallen. Yeah, it's been 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. He said, clean the money up. Like, this guy's the guy who doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is yesterday. He goes, clean the money up. And he's like an older man he's talking to. And he starts speaking in Urdu. Yeah. And you can tell he's saying, like, get this money cleaned up. Or yeah. whatever. What are you, you know? doing? This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm th- there's like, it's all ones, but it's like, <laughs> there's hundreds. Yeah, there's 100%. hundreds on the ground, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like thousands. But like, they were thrown. They each of had course. a package. I used to work in uh, Richmond Hill Country Club. God damn, that Bro. sounds rich. Oh, 100%. Richmond it's Hill? Richmond Hill <laughs> Country Club. Uh, country club. That's my like cousin, squared. My cousin uh, was like the uh, food and beverage manager of the golf course. <laughs> mm. Right? So, do you know Richmond Hill is? Obviously. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Like the Italian area, right? Uh, yeah, it's Italian area, yeah. Mm. It, gets, it gets... North uh, of the 401? Yeah, north yeah. of the 401. Like I was working off of Bathurst and Highway Seven. Okay. So a lot of Jewish people. Okay. A lot of Jewish people. A lot of Russian Jews were like, I, I, I was serving at a Russian Jewish wedding, and dude, Grey Goose bottles on the table. Yeah. Just on the table. Like you know how you go to a wedding and it's just they just have a water jug. Yeah. yeah. And everybody pours their water. No, <laughs> dog. It was water jug, <laughs> red wine, white wine. Grey Goose. Because I'm the one who sets up the table. I'm the one who sets the table. Like, Damn. fork, knife. Like They I don't even play. Yeah, dude, when I got to work that day, there was these cases of Grey Goose to the ceiling. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, is Puff Daddy here? What the <laughs> fuck we doing? They're like, no, you put one on every table. I go, they have bottomless Grey Goose tonight. And I'm like, holy Damn, shit. Damn, what's that, Bill? I don't even know. Jesus Christ, bro. I don't even know. But as That's me, the like, one time I've learned that very, like, cheap cultures... That the wedding is the one place society's like 100%. fucking blow money. You blow money here. You're good. You're green. There's there's no. It's the opposite of judgment. It's like the more you, the more thing you do spectacle, the more you love your kid, the more of a shine it is for the family. You know, and this is no hate or judgment, but you're right. You would think that. You would actually think that at a wedding. But yo, I saw. I was remember. I was in Richmond Hill. You said Italian, right? So Italian. An Italian married a Jewish person that day, and I was working bar that night. Bro, the 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 tips that we were getting from the Italians versus the Jewish people, yeah. night and day, bro, really? night and day, and like the Italians, they and the Italians were on one side, and the Jewish are really hundred percent. It's two different families, two, two different so families, it's like right. easily discernible where the yeah. tips are coming. Like like yeah. it was like the Goodfellas. You ever yeah. watch the movie Goodfellas? Yeah, 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 exactly like that. Like you see these guys like fucking rings and everything, you know, all the vetoes, like bro, like load it up, yeah, load yeah. it up, load it up, let's go, bro, and then they would drop fucking paper. Right in the freaking jar, and then the Jew, then, you know, the Jewish guys would be like, you know, Mordecai and his homies would come, and they, you know what I mean, and then they would order. Of course, they'd order a lot, and then they would be a little bit more pickier. Yeah, but no tip, and no, no tip, tip? No, pff, barely. Really? Yeah. Wow. Barely. But then some of them would. But do you know who would? It would be like the cooler older guy. You know, he, he he's not. He's like he's not like he his wife's. Knows the people getting married, so he's just there, like the older Jewish dude. He's like, I like, tip. He's like, ah. He's like, I've crossed the other side. I'm not associated with these uh, hooligans. Uh, there you that's go. That's wild, man. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Like I've, uh, <laughs> it's a tough one. It's like Jewish people are like actually cheap. Like when your Jewish friends are actually cheap, you're like, bro, like that would be like, I don't want as a black guy. I really don't want, I really have a fear of being caught stealing. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? You know? So I would imagine as a Jewish person, I'd, I'd have that weird feeling about being like, like visually like super cheap in public. hundred percent. But it's happened to me personally. Yeah. But you so know many times I'm like, guy, what the fuck are you doing, man? I just feel like. That's uh, so cheap, like that. Like people when do moves <laughs> that are so cheap, you're like, "What, dude? Come on, are you serious?" You know, all my cheap friends are either uh, the crazy thing is I have a lot of Jewish friends, and none of them are cheap. All my actual Jewish friends that I know personally are not cheap, and they come from like different types of Jewish families. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, my cheapest friends are like my brown and Chinese friends. Hundreds percent. They're Every- like. Everybody likes to think they're the cheapest. I've actually encountered all three versions of that. And I'm actually, I would say I'm I'm a pretty cheap person just naturally myself. Like, I definitely compete with like, <laughs> like I pulled some pretty cheap moves. And now that, that's like, uh, that's literally like. Well, I don't think like, like when, my, when I say my friends are cheap, it's not like they'll pull like a shady move. They'll just like. No nah, man, I don't want to go to Niagara Falls this weekend. I can't, man. It's too much. <laughs> I mean, like shit like that. And it's like, gotcha. oh man, it's oh come on, yeah. man. It's like, bro, why can't we just do the uh, the other night? Or like, you know, why can't we go on the weekday where it's cheaper? Or like, you know, we'll like, uh, you know how uh, we'll do uh, like like what's the routine when you go to the bar? Like, you go is it if you go to homies like. Yo, I got, I got a, I got a surround, or like, I'll get the shots, you get the beers, kind of thing, right? Got something like that. Yeah, then someone, some people would be like, my, my brown friend was like, bro, just let me handle my own, handle your. I was like, all right, all right handle your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but if you're buying too, it makes, yeah. it's the same thing. Like the round system. Yeah, the round. System. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But like, that's just whatever. Like some of my regular friends are just as cheap. You know, so I'm like, you know, I feel like my my biggest. Uh, Everybody likes to think they're the cheapest, their thing, whatever their thing is. They're like, yeah. bro, man, I'm fucking, you've had, I've had Irish friends be like, bro, I'm Irish, man. You met fucking my Irish grandparents, that's cheap. You know, everyone thinks that their thing is the cheapest. Yeah, like, Filipinos could be cheap, man. Yeah. Filipinos could be cheap. We do, we do, we have cheap tendencies, like, <laughs> like, uh. Bro, you come on my, you come, you sit in my car right now. Yeah, you got napkins from Wendy's, you got napkins from Burger King, you got Taco Bell napkins. Like when I go to takeout, I'm you grabbing North grab napkins. <laughs> Best believe, you oh, don't know. Course. You never That's, know. Of course, of course, and he, and they don't even have to be the white napkins. They can be the brown, brown branded, <laughs> like multiple times. Those times I was smoking weed in my car, and like it's, it starts raining. Like Harvey's, you know what I mean, and then the, the rain. Goes on like the the interior, like the water from because your windows open. Oh yeah, and then and I just open up it. the thing and you I have all these napkins. brown napkins just ready to wipe down <laughs> the car. And people are like, "Yeah, bro, you're smart." That's like, what adults do, bro. They have, they get a system going. You need you need if it's free, why can't I take a lot? I feel like that's Tim Hortons has good napkins. They're the white ones. They're good white thickness. Ones. Oh, they got grip. Yeah, they're like that's like a like they don't just like disintegrate immediately. That one. Oh, they don't, do not. So you, you can, can ask clean for your extra ones at Timmy's. Yeah, so you ask for extra at Timmy's. Like, I know the place with the good napkins. What is, uh, so you were in the States. What What is something that they, like, what kind of food do you think Bro, is lacking? You know what I miss the most from there is a place called Culver's. Culver's? Yeah, it exists in, like, the Northwest. And, like, uh. What is that? It's, like, uh, it's a burger joint. It's one of those burger shake joints, you know what I mean? I love that shit though. Yeah, burger I shake joint. Shit, I think it has a, a couple, some locations, Illinois, Michigan, whatever. But their mushroom Swiss melt is Fire. crazy, bro. It's crazy. One time I had their double, and I would get it every now and then. But and I sw- that's bro, just four dollars to two, right? It's probably dirt cheap. The double puts you into like that five six zone. It's still like you know what I mean. It's it's like still a under nice, ten. It's, a, it's not like the cheapest place. That's the thing about Culver's. It's yeah. a little more expensive than McDonald's. Yeah. But it's like you get a you the idea is you get a more of a gourmet. So is that a takeout? Burger. You could drive through. Yeah, bro. But one time I got a fucking double. I swear to God, I had to pull over on the side of the highway. Why, bro? I started getting fucking drowsy, man. Oh, it's the bro. It's bro. I you ate a double. 
it's a type of burger that when you're done, you got like there's stains that because it went down from your elbow oh. and it's dripping and there's like a stain here. It's like greasy, greasy. Ooh. But it's like it's so fucking. I thought you were gonna good. say your arm was gonna go numb. <laughs> yeah, you're bro. Like your arm, bro, yeah. you, I, I'd actually be like, oh fuck, you know what I mean? I'd pull it to the side, bro. Go get gas or some shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I. You know what? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. But what's something you think? would do well from Toronto over there, like food wise. Like what the yeah. Oh, probably jerk that jerk like jerk options. Like it's crazy how they don't have a lot of jerk options in the States. No, you no, notice no. that? It's like a couple Jamaican spots that go like jerk, you know what I mean? But like it's there's not really a big populace. Like Toronto it, like we don't realize how many live in this area. It's like No, we're blessed. Toronto is actually for in terms for of Caribbean. Caribbean there's a huge population, especially in this Eglinton area, and I live in this Eglinton. Oh, area, dude, right? my 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 mom and my aunt live. Like, I told you, I, I grew up around over here. You know what I mean? Like, um, like Yorkdale was my mom. <laughs> actually, that's so funny. <laughs> that's best. the best way to put it, bro. Everybody yeah. has a mall, right? Yeah, you know, growing up, that was like I love that so fucking funny. mall. You know, and oh, I had a I had a Mason Boot. Um, White Oaks. <laughs> sorry, fuck. I found what I'm talking about. See, this is the weed's so good. Malls. We're talking about malls. No, there was something before that. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> but whatever. We got. Uh, ah! No, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, can I hit you with three questions go ahead. that I do every go now ahead. and then? I've been doing it a lot recently. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> I don't know why this first one's even a question, but fuck it. Did oh. you get beat? As a Growing kid? Up, yes. I mean, this is a question you have to ask on an immigrant immigrant. Session. Yeah, exactly. I standard. do it like, you, you know have, what I mean? I'm like that. almost no, tired I, I respect by, that question. Yeah, okay. You know what? And you know what? I'll tell you, I yes, I did got beat. I think the answer is always and yes. How do you feel about uh, it? <laughs> you know what I mean? But the thing is like, bro, very needed. Very needed. I didn't understand the power of power, <laughs> electricity, until I left uh, like... I left like the, the water running a little bit and the shower. Like I had, I had to shower. Like if you don't close it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah if you okay. don't fucking crank it, yeah. Right. And my mom, <laughs> vexed, yeah. like pissed. Like I guess it ran for a long time, and I, I guess it fucking, you know what I mean, ran up a bill or something. But she was so mad, you know what I mean, about that shit. And uh, yeah, I had to, you know, I got a whooping for that. You know what's and, crazy yeah. is I bet like it didn't even run up the bill. Yeah, is that it was like <coughs> so not. much that it deserved the whooping, you know? Yeah, I bet you the bill was affected by like a dollar or two. Probably, most likely. And the crazy thing is, well, I had different types of beatings. My mom would throw like, uh, uh, like your parents ever throw like dry rice, like like uncooked rice, like raw rice or pasta on the ground, and you just kneel on it. No, 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 yeah, no, no. man, that's like old Chinese military, like Dude, next my, level. My mom would throw the shit on the and she's like, "Yo, kneel on it." <laughs> And I'll just be kneeling there like, oh, it should hurt. <laughs> yeah, man. I Bro, I would just get smacked. It'd be a smack, uh, like a quick, yeah. you know, that like feeling that you would have to smack someone. Yeah. My parents just went through with that first one. Just a stop like type thing. <laughs> There's a crazy point because at one point like, my mom couldn't even hit me anymore. Yeah. yeah okay. You got bigger. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Right. So there's one time I came home like at 4 a.m. and I was grade 11. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my mom was like pissed and she tried to swing at me and I just caught it and I just laughed because I was fucking, I'm high on ecstasy. I'm just like, <laughs> ah, mom, stop this. You're adorable. And then umbrella or that shit that holds the sliding door, you know, that, that fucking lock. Yeah, yeah. The, the little the wooden stick yeah, yeah. that holds every immigrant oh, house has God. the the That's sliding the stick. Yeah, yeah. The oh, you gotta lift up stick. the stick. Oh, how do I get to your back? You, you gotta lift the stick, bro. Lift yeah, the stick, exactly. bro. Go to the backyard. The stick, the fucking stick is down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh fuck, I'll come around. Uh, that was, I got the stick, an umbrella, the the slipper. You know what I mean? I got it. It was fuck. great. And no, and you think. Uh, you think it fucked you up or you think it was like it was warranted? Do you know what? My mom, mind you, my mom had to raise two boys. You know what I mean? What else can you do? Discipline these fuckers. Facts. Military and, regiment. And to, to be honest, like I was, I wasn't the best kid sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And she had to go in. <laughs> and I didn't, here's the crazy thing. I'll tell you the truth. I didn't like, I have this saying with my son. I go, yo, it's not a mistake unless you do it twice. 
So I didn't, I didn't um, do the same things over and over. Once Damn. I got beat, it wasn't like, you know. And I, I felt like, and she wouldn't just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. finish your pancakes, bam. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't okay, like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was, it was just okay, like, sick. you know, it was just like, what's funny is a lot of times people kind of had that relationship with it and like with getting hit, like, yeah, I got hit when I deserve to get hit. And they didn't go over the, like, yeah, they didn't over go over the, the, yeah. and I go, what the fuck am I asking my people this question? <laughs> you know no, but I feel like and part of me is like, why am I asking people? What am I trying to gain from this question? I don't know. I got to revise that. I, I, li- I like the question. I like I, the question, but then it goes into a place where I'm like, I'm no, like, how, I don't, I don't, how did that make know. you feel? <laughs> you know, like, I don't I know. Think, I think you'd be like, uh, well, what? I think it's just like, because if you notice, it is the immigrant uh, section. section. So yeah. we want, we want. I'm like, you get beat. But it's like, I feel like knowing every person's uh ethnic background yeah it just has a running theme or like yeah who had it like 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 you had ariel here last time from south africa like yeah. well, how did he get beat like with a fucking like elephant tusk like yeah. just lying around just yeah. an old boat you know what i mean you, you know he said how he got beat his mom would make the uh maids do it and the maids couldn't hit him hard because obviously <laughs> they're employed right so this guy used to get beat by black maids growing up. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> and they gave him soft hits, so he got you know. But see, that's the thing, bro. I think this question is funny. Okay, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, on to the second question. Go. What is something you only seen either done in the Philippines or you only seen Filipino people do? Huh. Some shit you only see there or the Filipino people. Is there a thing? You guys have a thing? Like I said, I always give this uh, example. I don't know if you even need it. You got I would. One? I would probably say like a lot of Filipinos pick things up with their feet. <laughs> have you ever seen anyone? I love that, dude. I never heard that. Yeah. That's what this is. Okay, yeah, my mom would like, um, <laughs> like literally, I don't know if I could like do it here. She would like lift up her let, you know what I mean? Like she would walk around the house and be like, Psh. Throw this out. <laughs> like who's who's uh, who's pet so this? But was it only your mom or other Filipinos did it? Other Filipinos did it. Like my um, uh like even my girl could do it. Yeah? My girl could just walk around and just like pop, boom. And boom, like right. they set it down or they use the leg and goes to the hand. Leg to the hand, bro. Okay. No need to bend over, man. <laughs> yeah, good. We don't need sh- <laughs> Damn, man. Right, that's, so that's sick. Yeah, it's okay. G shit. Fuck G-shit. yeah, man. So that's what this is about, man. You know Uncovering I mean? shit like yeah, that. Yeah, and I think that's it. And I think, and then I think that drag thing that I was talking about. I don't think there's any uh, like cultures have it integrated as much. Like, because uh, because part of their stand up comedy and part of their like, if, if you're a stand up comedian in the, yeah. in the Philippines, that usually means you're a drag artist. Mm, okay. You're a guy dressed as a woman. It's like singing. one of those two. Gotcha. But you're not even doing comedy. You're like singing or you're doing one liners. But what if when you are actually doing comedy? Yeah. Is it? Is it still the same show? And you just it go in between still the same those show. acts? You it's still out. the same show. Like, but, but the Filipino humor is like, uh, it's like dad jokes. Gotcha. Yeah, they don't yeah, really yeah. like premises and yeah, shit. Yeah. Oh, same with Sudan. It's yeah, like it's, one, a, it's one, like one, one, two liners. And yeah. then, um, yeah, they don't even want to, to fucking know you. They don't have to tell you like your, your background and stuff like that. But and, and I was doing some resorts too. So that was pretty sick because people from like UK <laughs> and Australia. And I was just like talking shit to them. and like, But they're like white people and Japanese people. And like it was just... Whatever that was fun, but I was like, "That's performing at like a hostel in in Toronto." Yeah. <laughs> you know okay. I mean? Yeah. I see what you're saying. So, did you ever go back like as just like vacation and shit? Like, no, that was ha- it was pretty much half half. Okay. Fuck you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was in in um, Asia. Yeah. And uh, I hit up uh, OG Ron Jossel and some other people, and I was like, "Yo, where, 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 where can I jump on and do some shows? And where can I fucking hit the road and stuff like that?" And they're like, "Oh man." But I, I was there for like three weeks and there was a lot of downtime. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Yeah, so it was dope. God damn. So like I was I was staying in the city, I was staying in Manila. Gutter as fuck. Yeah. It's 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 really sad though when you see that. You know what I mean? And the crazy thing was I I brought my son and I brought my kids, I brought my daughter, you know what I mean? So like they were I think like uh eleven and fifteen at the time. Yeah. When they saw that. So that's a good time to see that yeah. shit. It's like here's people that look like you. Yeah. But they ain't got shit. Yeah, this is, yeah. You know what I mean? I saw that at 10. Yeah. Which was like, 
that actually was pivotal. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And like, dude, crazy thing, my, my son wants to be a baller. This girl in the Philippines lit him up in bare feet on concrete. And I go, yo, this girl don't even have shoes, bro. She's lighting you up. And my son was like, yeah. You got checked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. So when you go home, yeah. you better make it count, bro. Yeah. There's someone out there that can do so much better in your opportunity. Like, Just know. Yeah. Yeah. So make it fucking count. That's so that's like, the, that was the whole like theme now when we came back. Like, like look, all these people. Like, we went to this one place, what part of the resorts. And I was, I was, this was, I was performing there too. And like, crazy thing that the transgender, if I can, they have a lot of transgender hookers too in the Philippines. You gotta watch out. So, like, you see these, you know, good looking bitches in the motherfucking, in the shade and shit. Good silhouette. <laughs> and it's like, way, why are you in the shade? <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Come over here. It's like, way, why, why are you under the tree for? Like, all the bars and clubs have the light up and like everybody's outside, outside smoking. Just, <laughs> right? But <clears throat> we would be there and I mean, I'm like, you come out doing these shows or you come out uh, at these venues and even when you just walk around, there's these little kids who just like ask for like money and yeah. they'll, they'll draw whatever you want with the sand. Okay. And then, uh, you know what I mean? Damn, it's like that. They're like, we'll work for you, but it's yeah. art. Yeah, but like, I was like, okay, cool. So, shout out to my man, Nick Reynolds, and we were doing a show at Second City Theater and the show was called Skirt Skirt. In Manila? No, in oh, Toronto. Yeah. yeah okay. So I was like, yo, we need to get a flyer done. That's a promo image while I'm out here. So I go, yo, can you write Skirt Skirt at Second City? Like they, were, they just did the whole flyer, bro. They did the whole shit on the sand. <laughs> yeah. And I gave these guys enough guap. I got them like, I gave them like dinner. Like, you know, I took care of these kids. Like they literally like, Street kids, you know what I mean? That's fucking sick. So, and I took a picture and like, I posted it on the gram and Facebook or whatever. And I was like, yo, this was one of the Im photo images and like me and Nick were dying and like, and then I told, I told my daughter who's like, she has like Adobe Premiere and I was just like, what do you think that kid would can do with Adobe? I go, so make it count. <laughs> You're paying your monthly subscription. Yeah. Make it count. <laughs> that's like, bro, I love it. I feel like that's what my daughter, uh, sorry, that's what my dad would say. Yeah. And that's what I feel like I would end up saying. You yeah, because I mean? it's, because like, it's, you're like, damn it, when they're, they're like that make it count attitude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but I'm like, it just makes so much sense from the parent side. <laughs> I feel like, like, uh, do you know who, who the best people in the world to me are? It's like, you ever have that, um, like when did you move to Canada? Like, did you be born in Canada? No, I moved to when I was six in ninety seven. Six ninety seven. Yeah. So you had to like start a whole new elementary mm -hmm. school and shit like like yeah. those Grade people. One. Like I yeah. I was born here. Yeah. So all my, honestly, all my coolest friends were like people like you who came in like grade one, grade yeah. three. And it's like, yo, these guys. And it's like, I bet you when you came, like you were like just so happy with everything. Oh yeah. At the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But, Cause yeah. you're just like, yo, you ever see these? And that's why I like, like the mental health of a third world like immigrant when yeah. they come to the first world, you're like, I want that. Yeah, this oh, guy yeah. just wants a bed, dude. He just he's happy with the hot water. <laughs> but then when you're born here, <laughs> you're born. That's why it's like yeah. you have these uh, traits that make you like ungrateful. But like you know, like well, I I've, I've got I'm, I'm, I'm almost in the same place at this point. You yeah, know? I, like. Even though I only came here when I was six, it's like most of my memories. I have no. Me I was in Sudan from born Sudan till three, and then when I was three, we moved to Amman, yeah, in the Middle East until I was six, and then moved to Canada. Okay, so, so I have some memories of that Amman, but nothing of the Sudan, and then everything of Canada. Yeah. So it's like I'm still kind of my whole environment if you look at like the math of it is still mostly here by a long shot yeah and that like affects my mentality and no it's all, yeah, I, I know what you mean but like you, you ever meet that guy like who moved like here during high school like that dude like oh yeah, yeah who's like a little too far gone and yeah that, <laughs> a little, but it's in like, the sense of their culture yeah because now there's there's 16 17 they get here those like, guys yeah. for me i saw that i'm the, those guys like now they're, I saw them on the point of they're like 21. They've been there four or five years yeah. and they're on like Tinder. <laughs> you yeah. know, like yeah, that's, that's the guy I know. You know what Yo, I mean? I mean, he's like, man. I had a homie. Um, he was getting married. So he brought, like, you know, one of his dudes, you know, from, like, from Sri Lanka, his cousin, you know, yeah. first time in Canada, bro. Just like 2018. Yeah. <laughs> Sri Lanka, first time in Canada, bro. 
I don't know if they have Ubers in Sri Lanka or whatever. I don't even think. Yeah. But he just saw a bunch of brown guys with bad white bitches in cars. And he was like, yo! <laughs> yo, they got it here like that? And I was yeah. like, I didn't want to tell him. I didn't want to tell him. I just was like, yeah, dog. Yo, get yourself a whip. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have a, a car filled with them, bro. Filled with them. Bro, white I, chicks love oh, butter chicken. Man, you know? they on that. You got a Prius? He's like, you didn't know? Bro. <laughs> Look, you don't even need a Lambo. To Canada, baby. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even a Lambo, bro. You got a Corolla out here. But yeah, it was, and it was like just watching people like, I love that. Sometimes I wish like I had a black, a men in black fucking flash. <laughs> And just come to Canada and just like just so happy, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, that wears off. Trust me, that shit. Wears it does. Off. Yeah. They say it, if you lose your arm, you're right back to your regular life in six months. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? that's what I'm saying. But it's like because you're so caught up in yeah. this lifestyle, it's yeah. crazy. Because then you realize like, oh man, these these needs that I want just ain't shit. <laughs> I don't have a single person like in Sudan right now, like besides extended family that I have like a close relationship with. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, it's like they're all here. Oh, okay. And everyone just is distant, and it has re- it has remained distant forever. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. But like now, my family's just that. Like my actual sister, her husband, they're trying to move there, so it's like they're going there. We have a place there, so it's like now I actually want to go back to Sudan a little bit. Well, okay. But it's like it's distant. You can't show up. Like guys, remember I'm the, I was here twenty years ago one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, know, you gotta work it in. <laughs> yeah, stay exactly. at a hotel for a little bit. Hey. Me- <laughs> meanwhile, I've been ignoring a lot of Facebook. Calls on Messenger. Yeah, like, oh, fuck, that's a lot of Arabic. <laughs> you know? Bro, when I was in the you Philippines, know? it was crazy. Like, I had to, like, see everybody. But people were, like, four hours away, six hours. Like, and the Philippines is, like, it's that. islands. Yeah, yeah, no. You know what I, I mean? It's like, I got to literally take plane, trains, automobile, like a boat. Like You got to come in low-key, but it's impossible. Yeah, and it was, it was hard to come low-key. But, yeah, like, but, dude, the minute Atlanta got fucking hammered. People are just like, hey, no! just tossing me beers and shit. Like, I feel like, uh, I don't know, man. I feel like everybody should visit their 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 native land at least like every four years. You know what I mean? Just kind of like, that's a good get a, point. Get a, get a re- reset, check base. Yeah, see yeah. your peeps. That's a good point. No, know, know where overdue. you're at. I'm overdue. You know? Yeah. Because there's there's times in your life where like, ah, what the fuck? Where am I at in life? And you know, you can't figure it out, and then. You go to like a, you know, a poorer country or like a, uh, your your homeland, and you're like, yeah, man, okay, yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, you're excited to come. It's not that <laughs> yeah. bad. I shouldn't be stressing over like 44 a- likes. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm mean? saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, man, no, that's so good. Yeah, you know, the last question. Go ahead. Is uh. Sorry, what? I talk too much. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good, bro. I love it, man. We actually didn't never even... I was like, oh, fuck, it's been an hour or something. I never asked the man about the Philippines once. No, I'll talk it. But uh, the last question is, over there or just Filipino people in general, who's usually the butt of jokes? Like, when they talk shit, they're like, this guy's a fucking... You know what I mean? Like, what culture is usually their, like, rival? Like The Philippines? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to say it, but like, you know, cause we're like, you know, we're in, in, in terms of Asia, we're like, you know, we're considered like the black people of Asia. Yeah, so yeah. we're the butt of the jokes. Yeah. Right. But the crazy thing is the best thing about being Filipino is like, we, we make fun of everybody. <laughs> so everybody's the butt of the jokes. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like I'm not saying every like race, I'm talking about like every Asian, you know what I mean? Oh, like, like within our own community, like, is it common to talk shit? Oh man. Like. Not even that. It's just like, I guess with Filipinos, because we're so, uh, we're like a mix of, of everybody. Like we had some Japanese, some Muslim. Like like if you really know the Filipinos. Yeah, I think Big Norm told me, it's like, there's yeah. so many people. Yeah. I, I, you know what Big Norm said to me? It goes like, like the, the country has been subjugated so many times that the people learn to just like be easygoing and like entertain themselves type shit. Yeah. That's why they're so like, Disproportionately talented Because I was asking him Why are Filipino Disproportionately talented No it's true And he's like Because we just have to be like We've been like Subjugated So we're always like Yeah And then once we got liberated We've been fucking Just like a- Entertainers by blood At this point Exactly 100% And 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 With that being said It, was, it wasn't like You know uh, 
there was one actual rival we had. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh man, these Cambodians, they better yeah. watch their shit. But to be honest, that's <laughs> the reason the question exists yeah. is because I'm praying that I'm I said hoping that? that it is that. <laughs> because, yeah. bro, like uh, Romanians have a beef with like Hungarians or something. Yeah. Like when you get into Eastern Europe, there's v- pe- people I would ha- love to give oh. you an answer for that. Oh, bro. Eastern Europeans, <laughs> like, I have a lot of Serbian friends. They're like these Croatian fucks. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> yeah you know Literally, I mean? yeah. Yeah, it's all. My girl's Serbian. Yeah. Her dad would be like warning her growing up, like, don't trust like a Bulgarian or don't trust an Armenian or don't trust a yeah. fucking something yeah. Indian. Alba- Albanian. I or, yeah, one of yeah, those. No, one of what, those. The, what, what was don't the country they them. came from? Yugoslavia or something, right? There was like. Formally, yeah, yeah, but it's like form- Serbia now. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I have a lot of Serbian friends. So I didn't know you're going to Serbia. So you're dating a six foot four, <laughs> uh, athletic woman. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's she's not that tall, but <laughs> <laughs> my boy. Are they all uh, like that? Oh man, my my homies Mihailo. Shout out to Mihailo. Uh, straight up Serbian name, but we were in, it was uh, caravan a weekend one time. We were hammered, and this dude got in a fight with some guy. He's this guy's six five, right? Literally, and this guy was just, and my boy is, he's a humble guy. <clears throat> he don't want to fight because he knows it's going to game over. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to just end this, dude. And this one guy was talking shit. He literally did one of those fucking, like, boom, the those 300 kicks. kicks. Yeah, yeah. But it cracked the guy's head, like, bam. And I was like, holy shit. I'm glad I'm <laughs> friends with you. <laughs> you know, Serbians are like, yeah, but like Philippines, we don't have, you know what I mean? We don't have that rival. I felt like, I feel like we're just cool with everybody, That's but. Sick. Um, we talk shit about everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot, so. of, a lot of people answer that at the end of the day. Like they'll tell me that, like, bro, we talk shit about. Like everybody is at the end of the day. Even if they have one like rival, if they don't, by default, they're talking shit about everybody. I'm about to say something real deep right now. Do you know who's the Filipino rival? Who? The Filipino man. That's Damn. the rival. Damn. That's the rival. Because I feel like we talk shit about ourselves the most. Like, do you know what's crazy thing? Big Norm, I mean, we're partners, man. Yeah. But we're, but bro, we were in a point, and he could vouch for this. We were at a point where, like, he knew certain people that I knew and I had certain people that he knew. And they kind of, like, set a narrative for us to be rivals. They're like, yo, man, this guy, you let this guy be nice. And I'm like, why is that a thing? He, he can't oh. be nice. Oh, he's trying to move in on your turf, bro. Trying to be a comedian. And it was like, what? And apparently he was getting the same type of shit. And I was like, no, man, we shouldn't be doing this, dude. That's crazy. And then I was, and then, um, so I vouched for Norm. I introduced him to Kenny. And then, and then like, cause Norm, Norm put me on one of his shows first. So I guess it was like, nah, man, let's, you know, kind of thing. Like, let's like eat together and stuff. Yeah, let's do it. And it's like, you're one of the comics in the game because Norm was that guy and he was on Much Music for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was on that thing. And then, so he was like that guy on TV and then when he was making music and he was coming, coming like this more of a personnel than a comedian, like hosting shit. Yeah. I, that's when I was becoming a comedian and then I was doing video on trial so then we were the two guys on much music that oh. were Filipino and so like the, there has to be one there only could be one right <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then he's moving on your turf man and now we do one of the biggest shows in the city man Bear Jokes and we did it because we fucking watched the throne it we just said fuck it bro, let's that, get together man that shit is live as fuck oh thank you but that's but I felt like that's who our rival is our own self sometimes we have to fucking I'll tell you which gigs I don't do uh, I stay away from the Filipino gigs, man, because they always like underpay. They always like, put it, bro, expect like, too much. Expect too much. It's a, it's a. I'm there for six hours. I gotta drive other people. I gotta pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, it's a, it's work, man. They treat you like family too. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. They come Can in. you get water? Can you get a 24 pack? Uh, yeah, on the way? man. We'll pay and you back. It's like what? I remember one time uh, this Filipino guy hit me up, and he's like, "Hey, man, can you come do my like?" I'm doing like a pageant, you know, can you come host this pageant? It's four and a half hours. And he sends me like a script to memorize. And I'm like, man, I can't do this for free. He's yeah. like, he's like, well, it's, it's, and it is, what, this is what he does. He goes, I saw you on TV and I thought you were good for this. And then, but do you know how, when you get like these, these requests, so this guy hit me with a fucking like Instagram DM request. So he hits me with like a long one. Yeah, like and then details. He, yeah, details. Yeah. He's like, this is where I'm from. This is what I do. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. You know these fucking guys. Yeah. So he does one of these. He's like, can you can you host pageants four and a half hours? Yeah. On, and on a Saturday and on a comedian, like that's 
that's the day you're making money. That's yeah, the day yeah. you're making the most money, probably Saturday night. So he's like, take me fucking six to ten. Uh, he goes six to nine thirty, but you know that's not nine thirty. You know, this is yeah. an ethnic event. That's, oh, yeah. First of all, I started at seven. I'm out of there at eleven. You know, and uh, that's exactly what it. Then he's like, is. yeah, man. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, I'd love to be involved, man. Like, how much does it pay? And he's like, oh man, you know what? Uh, we could give you a free meal, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of people there. It's, it's good for exposure, wow. right? <laughs> and I call. This is my answer. I go, scroll up, man. Because in the beginning of the conversation, you said you saw me on TV. I go, dude, I don't need the exposure. You already saw me on TV. And then, you know. <laughs> you know he goes, it, we'll pay you 18000 <laughs> <laughs> But then the other crazy thing was, he was like, you know when you see them typing the dots? Yeah, it was like, yeah, typing, yeah, typing, yeah. typing, nothing. And then it typing, went, typing, yeah. typing, nothing. It's typing, like, typing, typing, nothing. He didn't know what to say. You're hoping on the other side. He's like, fuck. Oh, God. No, I, didn't, I just left it. The yeah. thing with me, though, is like, um, I don't leave my, for, for social media, um, Cause I, I I check my phone. Yeah. Right. People are always on their phone. Yeah. I don't. I turn my notifications off. Yeah. Cause I don't. I don't want to be chilling and. Vroom, 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 oh yeah, me vroom, too. Vroom. I All, like my, everything's besides off. Besides messages, yeah. I, I have messages unlocked. Yeah. Like direct to my phone number messages. Yeah. But every app, everything is like. Yeah. Same I, I mean, never will no, get a no thing. notifications. Nothing. My like my text messages yeah, and my yeah. emails. Yeah. Because exactly. if it's my email, then it's from yeah. the agent. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my from, email, bro. Yeah. I ju- isn't that funny? Yeah. We yeah. jump at emails. <laughs> email. <laughs> that's, like, that's important. Yeah. That's important. Could be an audition. Could be <laughs> yeah. Email like, <laughs> for an artist. Yeah. That's the whole food source. Wait, 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 wait! I can't get my emails. I get it. Yo, let's end this podcast. Sorry, man. Let's man. land this thing, bro. Okay, let's do it. Th- look in this camera and let these people wear, uh, let them know uh, where you can find you. Um, hey, guys. I'm thanks for having that. me. Uh, I'm Keith Pedro, and you could check me out at anything at Keith Pedro. Very simple, very easy. Twitter is at Keith Pedro. Instagram at Keith Pedro. Fucking www.keithpedro.com. Very simple name. <laughs> Real name, has, no gimmicks. His name is, yeah, yeah, yeah. His name has got great stickiness factor. It's fucking yeah. great. But uh, as always, it will be in the description below. From my end, if you want to check out extra episodes and uh, behind the scenes shit here at the immigrant section, please check out patreon.com slash the immigrant section. Get on that. And uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. Why not? But, hit that uh, subscribe button. <laughs> Describe. <laughs> yeah. Subscribe button. Subscribe. Describe the shit. Uh, brother, this has been a fucking Yo, pleasure, man. Love you, bro. This has been I'm glad, I'm glad uh, we had a chance to do this. This is a long time coming, man. This has been blessed. I hope I get on that bear joke shit soon. Yeah, of course, man. Yo. We got to start doing it. When, when venue's letting us, because uh, for those who don't know, we do this show where we smoke weed in the venue. So uh, that's it's a weed show. Yeah. Right? So when that gets back to, you know, normal... Or for whenever that does, that's when we get back. So we don't want to call like we're we're still doing shows. Yeah, you did the, the Cadillac Lounge show, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're not calling it Bear Jokes until you can smoke weed. In gotcha. It. Okay. You so, know so, what so, I mean? Because okay. that's the brand, bro. That's my guy. Fuck yeah, yeah man. Fuck Yo, yeah. Yo. Until next time, y'all have been great. Have a great night. Hope you enjoyed. Peace. Um.